fears of serious concerns when I eating here. I mean, and again, this was not the first time visiting the Gambia <clears throat> since the change of government going all the way back to 2017. But my general view is just looking at Gambia post-dictatorship. <clears throat> there is absolutely no doubt, even the ones that haven't visited, that Gambia has leapfrogged and made some gains in what I would call governance and general democracy and the rule of law obviously has been restored. <clears throat> the independent judiciary can be relied upon. I mean, I mean, just a general overview. Obviously, the climate of fear is gone. I am, if I were to characterize it, I'll be like, I am very hopeful that there are opportunities that can be exploited. That is, if we're really interested in real change. You know, the very vigor, commitment, and passion that all of us came together to bring an end to dictatorship and create this, what I would call, I mean, this new Gambia. We are still able to, I think, <clears throat> demonstrate it again, come together to create what I would call the aspirational Gambia that we had in 2016. That is still, that is, that is still there, I think. If I would call my observations positive, I would say the investment in road infrastructure, I mean, it's there, no doubt about that. Call them OIC, call them whoever invest, I mean, whoever is behind the investment, which in this case is OIC, but it is there. And in, and, and in the long term, I think it's going to transform the country. We needed something like that. It makes going from point A to point B, even though it's work in progress, but one has to kind of give it a thumbs up. Um, the Minister of Higher Education talks a lot about investment of Tibet education. I think this is another area that I believe in the medium and long term is really going to help in terms of um, giving the necessary skills to the young people that are coming up. I'm looking for something like that. Give them the skills to be able to... Um, help, especially when it comes to youth employment. Again, I have seen um, improvement with NAWIC, especially compared to my previous trips. This time around, I mean, the lights were on. You know, every now and then it would go off, but it would come right back on. For the first time, I could say, just before I left, I decided I was going to buy myself a generator because I was going to be doing some work, you know, and I didn't want to take the risk. So I went ahead and I purchased a generator in hoping that whenever now it goes up, I'll be able to use it. I didn't really have to use it a lot, but so now it, there were definitely improvement. Of course, you know, freedom of the press, there's, I mean, FM radio stations all over the place. We had the opportunity to be, I had a special program um, with Peter Gomez, um, Pasamba, and uh, Alaji Baro and myself. So freedom of the press, it's really there. Suppressor, suppression of the media, I think is non-existence. Now, let me go to my, what I would call- You said it's non-existence? Is that what you said? Non-existence, yes. I, okay. mean, I mean, generally speaking, really suppressing. I mean, it's really not there to be candid. Areas of serious concerns though, you know, the structure of the political climate that we've had during the time of Jammeh, the structure of the political climate, again, I want people to hear me out. I don't want to be misquoted. Again, I believe where we are, Tufliti Baro, and where we are is way better than Jammeh. But the political climate has not really changed. What do I mean by that? Government has a total monopoly. And being an opposition is still an expensive enterprise to be in the Gambia. In other words, the status quo, in this particular case, NPP dominated the political um, 
climate in, of course, we saw how Sabali and the sisters switch to NPP. And they are out there kind of monopolizing it, kind of holding it to Gambians and saying, so Bugateki, if you really want to be able to make a change, if you really want to be able to take care of yourself, here it is. We are the only game in town. And I think that undermines um, the future of the country. We need effective opposition. So that climate, it's still there. And, 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 and I have a serious problem with that. Gambia, when you walk into that country, it's still, you can see chaos, disjointed, unorganized. It's a mess. I told a friend, if I were not a Gambian, that my umbilical cord was not really buried in Kaur Dandimayo, I don't think Gambia would be a country that I would want to visit. For what? There's really nothing Gambia really can offer. Traffic is a mess. It's chaos, disorganized. People are not disciplined. Even with the new highway infrastructure, divided highway, you would see people driving on the opposite side of the highway. There's absolutely no discipline. Traffic police, they are not really in charge, a lot of checkpoints. But I have to I have to say something about the cops, though, the police. In as much as you see checkpoints, but for the first time, I have never been stopped by a police officer and telling me, ah, bro, uh, don't you draw a tire fee? That kind of a thing. Nothing like that. I've never been stopped and asked for any money or anything of that sort for the first time. But coming back, Gambia, it's really, really a mess. The rural urban migration, there is this population explosion within the greater Banjul area. You'll be like, there are so many people. Even though there is investment in what I would call, you know, the major highways, which still is in progress. But 90% of the secondary roads are still in a mess. And I mean, going all the way back to 2017, no attempt has been made to really work on these secondary roads. Amut. And that is very sad. Extremely sad. The fact that for almost seven years, they are not able to, whether it's KMC, whether it's Birkama Area Kansu, they are not, apart from Banjul, but all the roads, it's a mess. It's like the Gaduga egg watcha egg watcha pa human nib malokawati. I mean, it's just all over the place. And you would have thought me, even if their attempts were made to make five, six, seven roads here and there, I would be like, you know, we will get somewhere. But those roads are still a mess. You remember before we left, we invited Mane, who came here declaring, creating access and safety and all of that, which I applauded here and supported and still do support it. But my friend, I don't think that they, they, they have really, there was a lot of thought to it. These roads were dismantled, businesses were, I mean, uh, dismantled and uh, get rid of them. Bro, the mess is still there. You would have thought so new way, you come in and you said, okay, we want to create access road for safety reasons. I mean, you destroy all the everything, but the debris is still there. <laughs> no one can use it. I'm not saying all of a sudden pave roads and throw the asphalt. I'm not talking about that. Get rid of the mess. Make it look like a road. Nothing like that. It's still a mess. So that tells me that they haven't really... Inflation. Let me talk a little bit about that. That kind of got me in trouble when I was on um, on um, coffee time. <clears throat> what I decided to do is not to rely. You know how inflation is. They'll tell you inflation is eighteen percent, twenty something percent. You know nobody can make sense out of that. So what I tried to do is, I wanted to kind of what I would call the economic basket. Pop Samba. 
Kalau Haji Musa. Haji Bentay Brisi Brisi why pasamba pasamba mungkilenen if you see the hotel this guy is staying bro hey hey for you can for you can you got you got you got to let him he got he can't disclose that stuff man what happens in jala this is jala man what's up with that this guy but we will we would get to that what i call the economic basket sorry So what I decided to do is based on my experience I throw in cash power in that basket I throw in fuel in that basket I throw in bread for breakfast in that basket I throw in malo using domoda or chu whatever you in that basket and I also throw in um transportation cost in that basket to kind of just give me a feel of um this inflation thing For the life of me I do not understand how Gambians can even afford cash power because moi I couldn't and I had real dollars I couldn't afford it I was there with my kids you know how american kids come in shambok they want to turn the ac 24/7 you put you you buy 3000 5000 dollars is cash power in the next day or two is gone I'm like holy cow it is not sustainable so for me i cannot for the life of me i understand you don't even have to turn i'm sure most gambians will not be turning ac or anything like that but i seriously do believe that um for an average gambian cash power my friend i don't know i don't understand how they can afford it fuel is the same thing for me you buy 3000 5000 if well Back in 2017, 2017, 2018, that kind of fill up my vehicle. Now, it's $10,000 and within a very two, three days is gone. How can anyone be able to afford that? That's another that was like a rude awakening for me as well. When we had the show on coffee time, you know, I kind of get in trouble with Pasamba and Alaji Baro and even um When I said and I think somebody called Pasama and said this brother is like la 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 what Pasama I'm I'm out know, of I I didn't know Musa was this much out of touch I I'm know, so out of touch <laughs> But this is what I say I woke up in the morning I was able to buy a loaf of bread nice plain bread nice for 10 dollars which is really technically speaking it's not really much uh 10 see pasamba doesn't like me converting things into dollars but that's what i do for it to make sense to me so i said okay divided by 67.50 14 cents for a loaf of bread <clears throat> the flour is imported the inflation is imported 14 cents for an average gambian i get it for a police officer or a nurse who is making maybe 3000 dollars a 4000 dollars a clearly is a challenge but i really with this total global inflation 14 cents for a loaf of bread if we were able to invest in the productive side of our economy i think that is something that can be changed overnight The same thing I talked about I went into a restaurant you know what's the name again uh, the guy that used to live in the lady that used to live in Atlanta at a restaurant pop some what's the name again um whatever Nubian huh no no Nubian Nubian no 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 um Yasin Yas Yasin 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 is it Yasin Jalo yes 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 Plasto Plasto this thing Well, that, that restaurant for two hundred dollars, yes. see, you are able to get a nice bowl of domada hot ochu. And when I converted it, it was two dollar ninety six cents. For me, <laughs> that is something that I can deal with. For an upright Gambian, it's a challenge. So all I was trying to do is just to kind of look at the inflation basket, and I'm like, with fuel. with utilities 
food, without a doubt, is still expensive. You walk into the supermarket, you pick little big things here and there. How an average Gambian afford it, I really, I mean, uh, do not know. But again, that was the point that I was trying to make, Pasamba, on that program, and it kind of got me in trouble. What does so not get you in trouble? It did. <laughs> because you're saying, what, what does not get you in trouble? <laughs> you're Everything. always getting in trouble. But I was just trying to be, and when I, I mean, Pasamba, we were at our house, and when I told Demba was there, Guy Nako, you know, he's very Demba. And Demba, what did, he, what did he say? I don't have to repeat it. What did he say? You were there. He's loaded, just like you. So he no, don't what did he say? That much. So he said, he said, what he, did he, he say? believed it was, he believed it was reasonable. What I think you guys were there. He wrong. believed, he believed that definitely, some of the prices, as far as food is concerned, it was reasonable. And for an average Gambian, you could even get a bowl of domadapo because my nephew was telling me, "Hi, your uncle, you're three hundred, three hundred dollars. I can go to Ghanaian Bifini, for fifty dollars again." I'm not downplaying it. All I'm saying is we have the right kind of government. We invest in the productive side of our economy. I mean, this so-called food inflation can be turned upside down. If you compare, because I was in Senegal, three days I was there before I went to Gambia, and coming back, I was there for two days. I can guarantee you it's much cheaper to have breakfast in the Gambia than in Senegal. It's far more cheaper to have lunch in the Gambia than in Senegal. Bolis and Benetin, you have to do Gambia, you have to do Gambia, you have to very expensive that country in Senegal, totally. So if you were to compare apples to apples within the sub-region, but cash power, electricity, and data, for me, it was a huge challenge. Trying to do work, what it would take me 30 minutes to do work here, it would take me two hours. Um, to do it in the Gambia. So that was a surprise. Look, solutions. I am of the belief that, that this regime, they've done their part. They have overseen things post-dictatorship. They've created an evolving democracy, climate of fear is gone. They have laid the foundation. But I think now is the time for the borough government and the present status quo to be set aside. The only way this country can get to the next level is gonna take new leadership and new change. If that doesn't happen, because the status quo and the government is the same politics. And that, that is not what is going to transform this country. What's going to transform the Gambia? Take it to the next level. It has to be changed in 2026. Because for Baro, it's just going to be the same old, same old, the same old kind of politics. What I would call this NPP, UDP, APRC rivalry, basically hijack where this country is supposed to go. And I do believe, as long as it's the NPP government, we are still going to be dealing with this NPP, APRC, UDP rivalry, and all that. And I seriously believe that will undermine whatever chance our country can have to develop it, to kind of, because I was in Senegal with my kids. They love Gambia. Oh, they can't wait to get back. Be like, hey, but Dad, I really like this place. I like Gambia. Gambia is nice. These kids were able to just overnight get into it. When we went to Senegal, they were like, oh my God. I'm like, so what do you think? Because these are people that are not really into the politics. But Dad, Senegal is really at a higher level. I'm like, but like how? They talk about the obviously, they don't know the politics of it the infrastructure, the access. It's just, it's just so obvious. It's like you're from a little village, a hamlet, to a big city. And I do believe that it is going to take new leadership, someone who transcends this APRC, UDP, NPP rivalry nonsense 
to take this country to the next level. It could be, it could even be the UDP, but I'm saying the rivalry itself is suffocating that country. It's all about trying to get somebody to come and join us, whether the person is qualified or not, that nonsense. I think that's gonna retard that country. Do we have opportunities? Yes, we do. But we need new leadership to transform and take this country to the next level. Pap Samba. Yes, from the smiling post, you know, most of where I'm sitting now, I can hear waves you know, hitting. You know, the breeze from the Atlantic Ocean hitting me. <laughs> so don't appreciate, you know. Uh, you know, but uh, sorry, and I greet you, and I greet all our uh, viewers, and we are sorry. We wanted to really come last weekend, but like Musa said, man, uh, the internet service in this country is horrendous, definitely. Uh, I'm lucky that I'm able to use my data. I'm using my plan from the US to be able to connect here. I don't know what how does how long that's going to hold. But Musa raised some very fundamental issues. Uh, if you look at this country, there is tremendous potential that it has. But unfortunately, uh, I don't think we have we have had governments, especially the current one, that has the very the very little or the ideas to move the country to where it's ought to be. And what I see is, you see, the Gambia is it's an interesting place. If you live in the Bijilo, you know, go to all these neighborhoods, Sere Gambia area, you're seeing a different Gambia. You know, everything is moving fast. You know, there is music, dance, every night, cars with horns blaring, you know, and then you go outside of that comfort zone, then you're content in the level of poverty that we have in this country. I had a chance to travel by road, to go to Senegal, I went to Fatala, whatever they call that place. And I was able to see uh, villages. And you can see, even those areas, the accidental development that is happening. And this is, this I have seen the diaspora who are building houses and all these things. So, can you hear me? Most are you able to hear me? I can hear you. I guess Sarian cannot. Um, I want to see whether the uh, okay. um, are all the viewers hearing him. Can you guys let yeah, us know? If the viewers can hear me. Are you guys I'm hearing me? You know, the free Wi-Fi. The free Wi-Fi has not hit yet. So, you know. Are they hearing me? Do you know? Um, I'm still waiting to. Yeah, I can hear you loud and clear. Yes, Albert is saying yes. Yeah, son, well, if you, Bob Trey is yeah. saying yes. So, sorry, Young. Yes. It's, it's yes. On you. So, but the, yeah. It's no, so sorry, me? Is yeah, can oh, you hear him? Portland, man? Oh. No, no, I can, I can hear him. Oh, no, I thought you kept saying this. So, where did this boss come from? No, he was frozen for a minute, so. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yes, good. Well, it you're was good. just a minute. Let me do this quick. What was that like? If you like the accidental development is all over the place. You can see Gambia City Dias for a whole building houses in, in all these other places. Uh, but I believe that, like you said, we need a transformational leadership to be able to transform not only this country, but also to tap into the many resources that we have as a people to be able to, to move this country ahead. You know, I think sometimes being here from December to January can be very misleading. Because you have all these so-called semesters in here, the dollar is moving, you know, there is a lot of foreign exchange, you know, and all that stuff. But when you leave, you leave behind a country that is in abject poverty. And Musa, even what you used, when you talked about the cheap food, you know, even if you go by a Gambian standard, the Dallas standard. But the sad thing is, for most families, they cannot even buy three of those a day without eating almost 90% of their salary. And that's the problem. So, but again, we are a country that does not produce anything. Well, we produce, but we do not you know, process anything that we produce. You know, we have decided to, to be stuck uh, in where the British left us to be grounded producers forever. 
And even with that, you have now most of these circles or whatever. They are telling people that they don't have money to purchase their nuts. Imagine mm -hmm. all the hardship in being a farmer. And the government telling us, no, no, nobody should have a problem of their, their, their nuts all being, being bought. Now they are going there telling, first they started with the promissory notes. And we are further reported that they, they stopped. They are telling them, well, you guys have to come back until we have money so that we can give you. I was on a program on Traga FM most. And, uh, yeah, I listened to it actually on the plane. Who were calling. Yes. Who were mm -hmm. calling. And we are talking about these problems. You know, these are things that we need to move away from. But we have other problems that we have. We are a country that do not take anything seriously. The most basic things are things that we leave until they get out of hand and then we try to fix it. We are very reactionary people. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing. Look at even what happened uh, with the with the national team. Something we saw coming. Yeah. They have qualified. But all the mess, and then what is it? We reduce it to oh, he called the president and said, No, 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 just give us diplomatic passport. We don't want the money. Who does that? And now you have the FA saying, No, 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 that was not the case. We had already had an agreement with the players about the allowances, and that was submitted to the ministry. So you have all these things looking at yourself and asking, but why are we here? You know, putting them in a plane that have no oxygen. Yes, the planes do have problems, but at least you have the, what do they call the oxygen things coming down so that you can put around your nose to 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 to, to live. And the danger in it is what could have happened if the pilot was a knucklehead and decided to go in five minutes more. That plane could have collapsed, uh, crashed, and all those kids and the the officials could have died out of negligence and the people doing due diligence. Musa, I know when I talk about this flag, you think that I you know, when you get in, the flag of our country is one of the most important symbols that we have as a nation. Everybody, the United States, the empty stars representing each state. The 13 the, uh, uh, stripes representing the 14 colonies is important. This is why they have it. We have a flag. We have a design. But Musa, do you know that the battle flag that was given to the captain of the national team, the battle flag given to the captain by the vice, vice president, if the president was there, he was going to give it to him, was the wrong flag with the wrong dimension? I've gone to military post, go, gone past a military post in Jongon or whatever. The flag that is flying there is the wrong dimension. I've been to the state house, the back of it. In fact, got into little trouble with them because I was showing my kids. Oh, that is the state house. They said I should not point at the state house. I'm like, what kind of nonsense is this? I cannot point to tell somebody this is the state house. They were telling me you cannot do that. I'm like, what is this? This paranoia. Musa, the flag that was flying there from the naked eye is the wrong dimension. So these are the basic things that a country should get right. And you talk to any official in the government and tell you, oh, I never knew that uh, those things are important. Oh, I didn't even know that the, the strikes were there. And you ask yourself, are we serious people? Because these are the basic things that you have. You fly there, it's supposed to mean something for the nation. It represents the nation. These are the colors of our country. This is the only way that we can disguise from Senegal, Senegal from China, all this. That's why we use our flags. But even with that, Musa, we do not even want to make it right. You just create a now all my red, white, blue, and green. Now why get a two to your And then you just go it and hoist it somewhere to represent the country. So to me, Musa, we have to start taking ourselves seriously, take our yeah. country seriously, take everything about our country seriously. Otherwise. This whole nonsense will continue. Of course, you will come here with your little daughters, change them, live life, go home, and the people will end up their poverty. That's the thing. The level of hopelessness in this country goes up. These young people are dying. And you look at it, what are they doing? What is here for them? Mm -hmm. That's the question that we must ask. We've been independent for 58, 58 years, now going to 59 years. What have we gained? What have we done for us as a people? The amount of money that has been pumped in this country since its inception, nobody can quantify it. But mm -hmm. has it benefited the people? And this is the thing. And let's say even the, the, the footballers, as for their allowance, and everybody is jumping and talking about money, doing it greedy with all the money that they earn. Are you kidding? 
Your president is earning a huge salary, but he gets his allowances. The National Assembly, sometimes they don't even go to the cities. They would go there and leave. They wouldn't even be for the, for the whole session. They get paid their, their sitting allowances every day. They represent the nation. That's what they say. These kids are representing the nation. The NBA players, Busa, they make a billion more than what our kids are making. When you are in the team, you are paid an hours. So let's start being this mediocrity of, you know, what, you are greedy. No, they are not greedy. They are just asking for what, what is rightfully theirs. You gotta have the leadership that's not ready to sacrifice, and then want everybody else to sacrifice for the nation. Uh, there was something that you said in that program. In fact, I repeated it yesterday when I went to the uh, MSDG session, the Stake mm -hmm. in the Nation forum. That, like you rightly said, the aspirational aspect of the struggle we wage for long. Has been betrayed and it's continued being it's been continued bet, continually being betrayed by the by the ruling class and some of this political class. Musa, we were talking about yesterday the TRFs, mm -hmm. and they were telling me how the implementation is going now. They really we have we are moving. I'm like, are you kidding me? Let's look at where we are. Musa, we all know, I've said this a billion times, I'll continue to say, <laughs> the reason why there was a struggle, the reason why there is a president borough is because of the victimization of Gambians by the mm -hmm. But today, for the TRC, for recommendations, implementation, for the most part, they would have to go to the legislation. And that legislation will have to the National Assembly. Who is sitting at the, at the head of the National Assembly as the speaker? Babakari mm -hmm. Tombong Jata. The man who told the whole world that the TRRC report belongs in the dustbin, in the dustbin, Musa. This is the guy who is supposed to be the speaker to ensure that those who are victimized will get justice. And who is his deputy? See the guy, the man, the chief dog dog of uh, Gambians who stood before El Gambian and told us, you know, and the whole world, that Jame is not going to go anywhere, that Barros' elections was illegitimate. But these are the people running the affairs of our country. What are politicians doing? Clamoring for those who've been fined wanting by commissions of violence. And what did the government do? They went to the National Assembly. They said they're going to pass a remissions bill. They were going to pass for uh, a bill that was supposed to stop those from working in government who have been by commons. But the same day, they decided to pass a bill to amend the, 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 the Commission of Enquiries mm -hmm. uh, provision in the Constitution to give the President the powers now to, to, to forgive people who've been fined liable by, by the Commission. And what is that geared towards? To was trying to get the Momodo Sabalis, the Jogobas, to come to their side. Are these people interested in fighting for justice? When was the last time that you hear President Barrow talk about bringing Jammeh to justice? The only time he mentions Jammeh is when he goes to Fogi and tells them that if Jammeh had believed in God and believed that he had won the election, then he'll be living in peace. So to me, it's a country that doesn't get anything right because we do not want to get anything right. We are driven by political expediency and not what is in the interest of the Gambian people. And as long as that continues, Musa, we will continue to fail our people. We will continue to fail the aspirations for which we fought this very long struggle. Absolutely. <clears throat> Brother Sariang, you are on the other side of the Atlantic. <clears throat> Obviously, and um, we did say that we're going to talk a little bit about some of the major issues in 2023, and I, again, not to steal your thunder, I don't know what, uh, how, how you want to approach your side, the fact that you are not in the Gambia, my good friend. Well, I, I hear you guys, you know, and uh, <clears throat> a lot of uh, constructive feedback, but I'm also kind of confused as far as the political class, because I hear that many, many times. And I'm not sure how that fits into equation because uh, elections have consequences. We all know that. And uh, it's not a divided government. 
we got an elected president who has a full mandate. He has the authority to appoint people to carry out the mandate of the people who elected them. So sometimes when we get oppose the political climate, I'm a little confused what we mean. And, and I like to kind of get clarity on that one a little bit because oppositions are supposed to be government in waiting, an alternative to the status quo, saying that we have better results, we have better policies if we get elected, maybe we're going to drive the direction of a country totally into a different, you know, direction. But but I keep, keep hearing, you know, political uh, monopoly, you know, the government, and, and I'm, not, I'm, I'm a little confused because if we aspire that we are on the wrong train, we are on the wrong direction, but at the same time, the political class comes into the way because it's a government. Obviously, you have you, you at the at the beginning of the segment you mentioned about you know still nowadays monopoly. So what 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 do you really think is the proper diagnosis, right? Because obviously you got a president. He's 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 elected. I mean, he has a five year mandate. He has control, absolute autonomy, who he elect and who he fired. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm just a little confused, and I'd like to hear a little bit on why the political climate or the classes or the rivalry, well, you got to have a, a opposition. The opposition got to speak on policies that they think it's not going in the right direction. So is that a political rivalry? I mean, is, is the political climate, the opposition needs to be quiet and be satisfied with the status quo? I, I think I, I like to, I like, I like, I like, I like to hear that a little bit more, especially you guys coming back, because obviously there is a government. The government has institutions and they appoint people that he felt that those people can execute his five-year mandate. So I'm not sure what power or what things can be done differently, especially within the current environment. When I said... Sorry, I'm <clears throat> Let, mm. let me, no, because no. He, he mentioned two things that I kind of want to address, because I think I was the one who said the political climate, whether it was during the First Republic or the Second Republic or the current situation, hasn't really changed. <clears throat> Our politics, what I mean by political climate, it has become a zero-sum game. There are certain institutions, irrespective of, let's say, the civil service, for instance. In the Gambia, Unless and until you are a supporter of an NPP, if you are seen as a UDP, that's why I said being an opposition is an expensive enterprise. Why do you think Momodo Sabali and his sister decided overnight to switch over to come to NPP? It's because of the political climate. Bunyan fi nante. People have realized. I, I really. <laughs> no, no. I, I really wanna, want us to. I, I just, really want us to me, focus on the government, not Mamadi Sabali per se. No, 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 no. But that's what I'm saying. I'm just giving you, I'm just giving you real example. What I mean by when our politics, whether it was during the time of Jame, citizens were well aware if you don't wear that green thing, identify with the APRC, whether you are in government or you are in the private sector, you don't have a chance in hell. So it becomes more of like a meritocracy tends to take a back seat. If you are known not to be a supporter of the NPP, even if you're a businessman who could come in and make a difference, but because of your particulars, that could interfere with that. That undermines this so-called development that we are talking about. So our politics is still the same. That's what I mean by the rivalry. It's all about that. Government policies, let's say for instance, just, just, just listen to them. Their obsession of we are going to destroy the United Democratic Party. In other words, they're saying we're going to destroy it. effective opposition. And the way to do it is not to win the hearts and minds of the Gambian people. It's not to go out there and implement policies that will bring access to drinking water, that will make sure that Gambians can afford their survival. No, it is based on kind of trying to get... UDP supporters to switch over to NPP 
those are the kind of politics that I'm seeing. That's what I mean by the political climate and government has basically monopolized everything else. If you're a businessman, a cousin of mine told me this, bro, I'm a small business B. And do so do man do man do man neka and time government so much of the face small business will do them fee fee. If another government comes, I will do the same thing. Now, if that if that is the general trend, if that's the climate, what I'm saying is it's gonna undermine, bro, the development that the country needs. Now, what I what I what I mean by this NPP, APRC, UDP rivalry, everything we are consumed by that. And I think that undermines um, the country. I, I, I think it really does. If we are going to take, take this country to the next level, we need a leader who will come and transcend that. That leader could come from the UDP. That leader could even come from the NPP. That leader could even come from DOI. But what I'm saying is, it has to be leadership that is not obsessed with this daily. Because again, the, the NPP was elected in 2021. They have five years to deliver to the Gambian people. Now, what they should have done is to focus on that rather than spending all their time worrying about, oh, we have to destroy UDP, or oh, we have to make sure that we win some of their supporters in order to destroy them. Those are the kind of petty politics that has really, even during the time of Jawara, it was really there to some extent. Now, the meritocracy, like I said, we should be able to, irrespective of whether Sarian Maron is a supporter of the United Democratic Party, but if Sarian has real engineering skills that could come and go and become the MD at um, National Road Authority and take it to the next level, then Sarian is the guy. But I can guarantee you, if Sarian is known to be a supporter of the opposition or a sympathizer, or he doesn't even out the, and then talk about nice things about um, Barrow, the chances are he will never be given an opportunity like that. I think my brother, that, that's what I mean by total monopoly and 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 and, and, and this NPC APRC. Pasama, you can jump in. Yeah, Sarian. I think uh where I would agree with Busa is instead of governing the country, this government is so much focused on the politics and not politics that even benefits the people look at look at this whole nonsense of oh we've got these people and then you go to the state house organize this big jamboree or whatever you do, to now present the people and look look at the, the politics of inducement in full glare and the sad thing is the opposition which Barrow was part of which cdc was part of with all these people running around, we are part of, had always complained about politics of inducement. Especially a person like Siri Sissi, he was in Doi. That has always been our problem. But what do you get, Sissi, with uh, uh, somebody joining you? Or a new car? Brand new car, zero miles. What did you get, the sister? Should I tell it? Yes, say it. Should I say it? Yes, they've given me a car. They told me, they go and look for a house and we'll pay for that. It's, it's, and then you ask yourself, what is this that we're doing? In a country where even an ambulance for some of these people is non-existent, Musa. But again, when kids ask for allowances for their, 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 their matches, it's a problem, we don't have the money. But the government in power, has no money giving people brand new cars. They will say, oh, it's from supporter A or supporter B. That's what they will tell you. This politic of inducement is like, pretty much we are not interested in moving the country forward. What we are interested in is destroying the opposition, weakening the opposition, thereby establishing a de facto one-party state. That's what they're trying to establish. And there was something that Sarian said. The mistake that Gambians have always made it's, you know, it's not Jawara, it's the people behind him. It's not Jame, it's the people behind him. It's not Baro, it's the people behind him. President Arama Baro is singularly the only person in that country who can hire and fire without giving the Gambian people an explanation. All he has to do is press release, 
section 70 something of the constitution by uh, relying on section something of the constitution that vested these powers into him he has now relieved musa Deng, you know from his duties as a co-host of for the people by the people and replace him with bob 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 Touré. and then that's if we move on they, they, so they don't cannot, tell me that. that the person who has the power yes we are trying to we're trying to get rid of you Andre bob Touré. <laughs> the person who has the powers to do that surrounds himself with the people that he wants and then and tell us he's doing good is the people around him musa if this show don't go as it is supposed to go we are responsible for it you cannot blame the people that we invite as guests to this yeah. show we invited them whatever they say here at some point will be will be held to account Absolutely. because yeah so 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 this 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 but but we are not a serious people so go ahead and you know the guy about it. But yeah. Musa, I don't think any serious country will focus its time so much on people whose political capital is nothing. Zero. Musa, even if you have the political capital. They don't have it. It's a perception. Yeah, look, look at, you know, to tell you how the, the level of mediocrity in our politics. Look at even this, 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 this notion by Barrow and the people that he works with. The, the best thing that can happen to this country is to align themselves with the APRC. Fabakari Tombong Jata's APRC. Do you believe that Barrow won because of Fabakari Tombong Jata's APRC? What have they brought? They cannot even win a seat on their own. If they won, I think it was one or whatever. They have no political base. But of course, it's this politics of greed where we we'll just try to get anybody we, you know, it's like you talk to them, anyone, you know, we try to get you in our corner. Why the hell do you need me in your corner? Leave me to be who I am. You should appreciate that. You should appreciate and celebrate divergent views. You cannot have everybody in the NPP. What kind of a country are we going to have? Or everybody in the UDP, what kind of a country are we going to have? But again, if there is anything that parties should learn from, particularly the UDP, you cannot just accept anybody yes it is a political party it's a democratic organ anybody can join but do not elevate any everybody to a person that they do not deserve people need to be a lot more tactful musa you cannot be you, you just cannot go and be friends with everybody yes it is a anybody's right to want to be nice to you but i don't see me that you should go to their house and eat with them and become friends overnight you have to choose the people, but this party, over and over again, we remember when that, what was it again, Mr. Ba, something Ba, General Ba or whatever. Former Minister of Interior. They even gave him a name. Yes, he was also given a name. Hussein Uhan gented him with a name. They even had a big rally on his behalf, where he came from. Where is he now? Three weeks after that, he was gone. Yes, there was another guy who was there in the RRC. He went and visited Usain. And I told my UDP friends, why would you allow this guy to use you? This is the same guy that came and said, Jambi went and testified before the TRRC that he was one of those who was brutalizing the UDP people in, 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 in the Jaras. But this guy would come, they say with a delegation, so let's give him audience with Teno. So you are sanitizing people who do not need to be sanitized. Sukosinyate. They elevated him. Suku, suku, suku. Where is Suku today? Same the thing. same thing. One mm -hmm. thing that people need to know, especially the UDP, I'm sorry. No, you shouldn't be sorry. Is Debo by force. Yes, Debo by force and the others. They are leaving the UDP. Was not necessarily out of, you can call it greed or whatever. But this was a party that believed that, you know what, Baro is the president, he was part of us, let's support him. That's a different thing. It's totally different. They are politicians, like the Kevin Singh James, the Usainu Davos, the Amtanes. I'm just talking about the UDP. And, and some of these people who have core beliefs because they believe in what the UDP stands for. They're not going to be going to somebody because of a card that they are given. Because if that was the case, they would have left a long time ago. If I'm relying on people, those are the people that I would rely on. The Boj Sherikans and all these people who had an opportunity to tell, but you know what, don't worry, I'll work with you so that I'll continue with the NPP. 
when he said, no, you're going, he yes. said, I am leaving my job, I'm going. Those people have integrity, they have faith that they believe in. Correct. But this post-2016 people running around everywhere, Babala Commando, Babala General, Babala Khamanakak, and all these things, what they believe in is not what the UDP stands for. I don't believe Sabali to be, I don't believe for one minute that Sabali or her sister joined the UDP because of policies of the UDP. Are you kidding me? Hell no. And we've said it here. Again Sabali and again. the UDP. Hussein Udabo came out and said that banning was unjust. He believed that it was too much. He's a young man. He should be given an opportunity to work again. And he said, you know what? This guy stands for me. I'm joining him. Not because of what the UDP stands for. Because you cannot leave the UDP five-point agenda and then run to the NTP, which agenda are going after. And these are the things. You see, <laughs> us in Doi, we will never grow, people will say. <laughs> because we are very selective. We are absolutely selective. You can join us, but you will never see anybody join Doi, and all of a sudden, that would make me... No, 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 you can... Ele and ele it would elevating like somebody elevating them to a messiah. That is... That is... The messiah, and that's what they do. And, and to the end where even you call them, you, you call it out, you call like Musa, you were on the receiving end of that. Because you question this guy, asking whether he would denounce he don't because he believed that Jameh has blood in his hands. He would not answer that. And you were accused of attacking me because of Madiga. Yeah. Yeah. They defended him like they were defending somebody with an yeah. Is a question. Politics. You we have to elevate <laughs> our politics. Very and that will start from the, the from the parties. That has to start there. I can be friends with anybody, but that doesn't mean that I will get you to the level where I would, you know. No, hell no. These are yeah. serious matters, yeah. and the Gambian situation, Musa, is an, it's not an ordinary situation. Let's be honest. We live in a very extraordinary time, and the reason for that is there were people who cheerleaded. Jamis dictatorship and corruption to the hilt. Not because they cared about the Gambia, but because they cared about positions that they would occupy. Absolutely. So you cannot have these people turn now all of a sudden become the messiahs now. You turn them into these great people who must be protected, who must so be bad. sanitized, who because must be excused for some of the utterances that they made. <laughs> Sol, Sol Bajid is, is making me mad. Me, it's making no, 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 me mad. No, no, come on, Musa. It's all right. Sol Bajid okay, is Musa. making me mad. Oh, please, we must give the devil his due. Sabali contributed in helping the UDP. Sabali did not put... UDP made Sabali. Sabali well, was, was a nobody. Musa. Can I, can I, can I, can I, can I, can I come he, in, Musa? See, Musa? No, Just because we need to talk about the no, Sabali no, no, issue. Because okay. we need no, no, to. No, 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 no. We need to no, no, talk no, about the Sabali issue. Because I think we never did. Let's go. Let coach finish, then I'll come in. Then you can come in. I'm gonna, there is, if there is one thing in the in the diaspora that continues to be a problem is, uh, like Pata would say, there are a lot of low political antennas. <laughs> so you suggesting that Sol Baji has a low political antenna? <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. I'm not saying that because if you do, if you know Gambian politics. Sorry, you're muted. You're telling me, you're telling me, uh, the UDP, yeah, 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 the Musa. seats that they won, <laughs> the seats that they won, was as a result of that. <laughs> let's look at, let's look at even the KMC. What was Sabal's <laughs> contribution in the in the in the campaign of Talib? Zilch, zilch, zero. Let's let's look at. I can guarantee you. What was Sabal's contribution? For uh, Rohi defeating uh, the NPP in in Bajul. Zil, zero. You think you think Birkama was won by Youngs because of what <laughs> Sabali said or done? <laughs> My brother. Oh, you think that the uh, to the LRR, like uh, Mansa Konko, was it Mansa Konko? Yes. LRR. Do you yes. think it was won? Landing, by landing, friend, landing, because landing, of what landing. Sabali said or done? Landing. Yeah. You have to understand the politics of it. And understand the base. If anything, Sabali benefited more from the UDP than the UDP did from Sabali. Million times. That is an irrefutable fact. It's not even close. Because what Sabali was able to gain from the UDP, 
is relevant again. They met him. They met him. They met him. Because the, <laughs> there was nothing going on for him. It's, that they all. elevated him to the extent of to the extent that they were <laughs> even naming him as a possible successor. <laughs> to say, do you hear that name? Or somebody <laughs> because of without the UDP, if he, if he had gone to NPP, uh, it would not have been to this level. But anyway, you know, we all have our ways Go of ahead. deducting, I mean, making our we, deductions. But you know, we've never talked no, about no, no, this no. Musa, issue. Um, Musa, Musa, Musa. And I want to have my. Why do I? Why don't I just say two minutes? My take on this whole Savali thing. No, no, but but the, when the but okay, go ahead. Me, but someone wants go ahead. someone wants to hear from me. He go said ahead. he wants to hear from me. Can I know? And it's on and it's on oh, Twitter. So he said okay. he wants to hear from me. Give me the opportunity for him to hear from me. You know, you know, Musa, Musa, I agree. The reason, the reason, the reason I push that conversation because I really wanted to have a a real, real disease where you need to kind of lay out what the issue is. And, and I think you both highlighted very well that the problem, the disease within the parties is who I can get on my side, not based on that person's track record, based on his character, based on his integrity. And I think we need to hit this hard. And, and you know what? UDP, MPP, they are all they, they, they made a mistake. And, and this is something that I speak clearly and I do not agree. And I told from the answer, you got Sabali in UDP. Sabali never believed in the core beliefs of UDP. He never did. We saw the man, even at the commission of inquiry, his mannerism, his behavior, head gestures, Answering to the lead council. And you go back, we had this program, but we had this discussion on the program here. And I said it. You cannot contain, you cannot claim that you are that much educated. And your day-to-day -day display on a public domain is uncomposed, very uncompromising. And, and this is an issue. And I think UDP learned from this. Don't bring somebody and think someone, he has no appeal. As you guys rightfully said, I asked someone, answer this question. What has this man done? Nothing. You know, we, we have Sol Baji. And, and Sol Baji, this is, the, this is the sentiment a lot of people keep saying. Hyperbole. Hyperbole over hyperbole. He did this, he did this. What is the measurement? What has he, what constituents or what follower? This guy, when he switched to MPP, a Kianka guy went to Farafenya in the heart of Badibu, where they told him he was the father and the guy took that away from him. He couldn't even go back to Farafenya and say, oh, I am the father, I need to claim because I'm in MPP. They revoked that stuff in a heartbeat. They say, you know what? You went to MPP, we're going to take our fatherhood from you. What appeal does he have? Absolutely zero. He doesn't have anything. All he does is just these utterances, being boastful and all that. And, and I didn't want to, but I, we got to talk about these things because it matters. We cannot continue to have an issue upon issue upon issue. Same mistakes, same mistakes upon same mistakes. And it, these parties need to be held accountable. I can't be part of UDP if I cannot criticize them. That's what the party stands for. Things that I don't agree with them, I need to be able to speak against. And these are one of them. We have to be careful. Not everyone that comes in, oh, it's a democracy, democracy. You know, this man in particular, he brought a lot of division within UDP. Because since he left, I spoke to a lot of people. He, he, he had pseudo accounts. And he was criticizing people to bring mix up. He did it. I mean, it's a fact. So what, what gain is that going to bring to the party? And you want that person to be dear to your party? We keep talking about this. Too. Yes, we celebration. And, and you guys said it. New vehicle, zero mileage. And he's supposed to be bragging about that kind of stuff? And he is very well-educated. 
he cannot find some type of employment besides government doggo doggo. Exactly. exactly. I mean, give me a give me a break. He has no relevance. It's nothing but a freaking political juggernaut that he is, and he is doing that. And even today, a guy who people question your integrity. You stand here, you are calling someone a teddy bear boy. At you, you see how this person, he composed himself in every setting. Oh, so unprofessional. It's all about me, 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 me. And I think we need to depart from that type of political patronage. We need to come to terms that if we are serious about taking over the government, if we're serious about putting out a policy that is alternate or that is government in waiting, we cannot do things like the sitting government. And that's what my argument is. Because if you keep saying, oh, you know, he didn't do that, but if one person comes in, you're trying to go for the same people, that calls, you know, it calls into your question how serious you are. And I see people keep saying six and nine. Why wouldn't they say six and nine? If you basically doing, have the same template. What I'm trying to say here is, Musa, the bottom line is 2024 moving forward, UDP needs to have a different template. The same political footprint needs to be different. The appeals needs to be different. You need to speak to the lingo, appeal to the aspiration, the hopes of the voters, not going into the trenches in, based on incompetence. We spoke about this. I told you, I said, today, Gambians, if you look at Gambian, 2 million people, the person who designed Rwanda, where Rwanda is today, is a Gambian. I told you, I said, the guy who used to be at Nawek, Baba Fatajo, he is in Kenya right now. He is the engine, the brain behind their main grid and their energy system. But because of they fired him, because of some nonsense connection with UDP. And I agree with you guys. And that's, that's why I provoked that, con I pro I provoke that conversation in order for us to have a greater conversation of who we are. Because sometimes I think people overlook these little things and I think this is the stuff that keep biting us every now and then. And, and I think we need to speak about it. And, and, and we need to start, if we want as a country to trend differently, I think we need to start doing things differently as well and hold each other accountable. And that's it. You know, <clears throat> this, this, this Sabali issue, I don't even know where to begin. Let me put it this way. All the three stakeholders are winners in this mess. Sabali is a winner. UDP is a winner. NPP is a winner. And ask me, how in the hell is that possible? Sabali is a nobody. That was actually the UDP made him. This is a guy who's born for life. He was unemployed. All of a sudden, he became so attractive. The government was willing to do whatever it takes to bring him on their side. So it's a win for Sabali. Overnight, the ban is going to be lifted. Obviously, he's going to get a job. He's going to be able to take care of his family. In the short term, he's a winner. NPP is a winner. How? Because here you have somebody, a political rival, who was insulting them, going after them. UDP was using him to attack dog. They were able to bring him and the sister on their side. So if you look at it, the politics of it, they're also a winner. So how is UDP a winner? You know, unfortunately, Sabali hasn't done anything for the United Democratic Party. Personally, I seriously believe that Sabali being a face of the party would have undermined whatever chances that they have in 2026. They will lose and they will lose big. Sabali was not what they needed as a campaign manager. Sabali is not the kind of face that the United Democratic Party needs. All that Sabali did was reinforce what UDP already had. Tough, tough, militancy, appeal to a base. 
That's all he brought to the party. Nothing absolutely. So the United Democratic Party, this is an opportunity. Removing somebody like Sabali, that will give them an opportunity. You talk about template. For them to be able to repackage the United Democratic Party and get ready for 2026. There was no way in hell they could have done that with Sabali being the face of the party. Saul is talking about Sabali, let's give the devil his due. Sabali hasn't done a thing for the United Democratic Party, my brother. You see, UDP is one of the most effective opposition in the Gambia. Let's imagine Musa Jeng today being a critical to the United Democratic Party. When I had Sabali on the program, all I asked the man was, do you believe Jammeh had blood on his hands? UDP supporters were calling me Dormi Haram because of, they said the only reason why I asked that was I, I, I hate Mandinkas. I'm like, you really serious that I'm so ignorant that I would just disagree with Sabali because of his ethnicity. Then definitely, yo, 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 you, can, uh, you might as well call me a bastard. The reality is they got to get away from that politics. They have to get away from that. You know, we all remember Sabali in the struggle. It takes all, all the way back to New York. I don't know, it was 2003, 2005. This was a guy with the hands in his pockets and giving us the finger and tell us to go F ourselves because Jame was the best thing. On the, that we don't know what we are talking about. Yeah. That is the Sabali that has been following, that hasn't changed as far as I'm concerned. I've seen him, his politics evolve. First, with the, after the 2016, in fact, he campaigned for Jame. When the opposition won, he made a quick turn, trying to appease Barrow and the NPP. When the thing didn't work out, then there was the white paper, he made a quick switch, joined the UDP. You see, UDP and NPP, they have the same DNA. And that is so unfortunate. It's the same bloody DNA. Their politics is obsession with, let's suck it to the UDP, let's suck it to the NPP. That is not the way they're gonna win the hearts and minds of the Gambian people to win in 2026. You see, after our program on Coffee Time, people who dislike the NPP, I asked them, what's your take on come 2026? They told me Baro is gonna Baro is gonna win hands down. If the United Democratic Party does not change their politics and try to win the hearts and minds of Gambian outside of their base, Sunyake did not send Bopa. If they want to do the replay, the politics of 2021, the same campaign that they ran with the same candidate that they ran against Barrow, I can guarantee you they will lose. I'm serious, they will lose. <laughs> well, that's not going to happen. So that the they will lose change. and they will lose big. <laughs> is Barrow popular? I can guarantee you he's not. Can he be defeated? He can be defeated, but it ain't going to be easy. The same commitment. The same preparation, the same passion that we were able to come together in 2016 to remove a dictator. That is what it's going to take to remove Barrow. Can it be done? It can be done. Can the United Democratic Party do it? Yes, it can be, but not with the same kind of politics. It's not going to work. It is absolutely not going to work. Sabali hasn't done anything for the party. They made him. If I were to join UDP today, they call me, oh, Musa Jeng is so close to Mr. Dabo now. Mr. Dabo is a very influential and powerful man. There's absolutely no doubt about that. And he did not get that out of a vacuum. He earned it. He put everything in the line. He sacrificed everything. There's a reason why United Democratic Party supporters are loyal to him. It's because what he has done. The same thing with the Kemeseng. The same thing with um, the, 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 the other all the gentlemen that came to Atlanta that we met from Kiang, uh, uh, Mani, I think, the, older, the, the one that was a deputy speaker. Oh, Sani, Sani, Momodu Sani. Momodu Sani. You know, for them to win, they have to change their politics. And, 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 and losing Sabali is a blessing in disguise. In the short term, yeah, it hurts the party a little bit. 
But you know what? It is a blessing in disguise. This is an opportunity for them to, for them to put their party together, repackage it, and sell it to the Gambian people and win the hearts and minds. I, 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 I think it's an opportunity. For Sabali, he did what he had to do. Really. Sabali has always been looking out for himself. Some people say, well, I'm going to kini mungi janga. I don't, and and most, most of the time, this rationalization is coming from NPP supporters or people who do not really care for the UDP one bit because they think they got exactly what they deserve. You know what they say? No, man, play on Sabali. I'm going to, boy, klingi janga. You know, I mean, and, 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 he doesn't even he doesn't even own a home. I mean, Jabaram Samu ko topoto, Bobi ki gai munin ko topoto, Amud Halis, Amud Lee, Amud La. So this at least is an opportunity. I'm like, okay, let me get this straight. For somebody who is so smart, you have a master's degree in economics. You're always analyzing the macroeconomic analysis in the country. You are telling me the only reason, the only way you are going to survive is to be on a government payroll. <laughs> but you don't have the ingenuity. You don't have the resourcefulness. You don't have what it takes. Hussein Rudabo did not say that. When he took all his life, everything, he lost everything going all the way back to 1996. He could have been a prime candidate to say, you know what? To hell with it. I was the lawyer. I was the one getting all these retainers from government institutions. He could have easily joined the government. Bro, that's a cop out. That's a rationalization it doesn't hold. That's why I that's why I said that 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 climate. That's why I kind of said that. Savali is intelligent, supposedly. Savali is the man, he's the guy. But he couldn't survive without being on government payroll. Hey, my brother. But again, for the UDP, like Coach was saying. They need to, they need to, and, and, and I, I see what's his name saying that they learned their lessons. I don't think they have. They're just saying that. Their modus operandi is no different from the NPP. They have good people that can speak to policy. They have good people that could come up with ideas. I really do believe that. But I don't think they've gotten the politics right to win 2026. I don't think they have. I've listened to some of their analysis. I've listened to Lamin Mane on Coffee Time, and they're telling me, well, you know, we've changed it in such a way. We have computerized how results are received. So that, no, 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 my brother. That's not where the problem is. <laughs> Believe me. It's not about computerizing so that when elections are, you guys can log it and know Kendall and Sacha. <laughs> what are the problem there? It's not there. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Where the problem is, they need to go, we have three years before the elections. They need to go to the constituencies that they did not do very well. Hire somebody like Cyprus. Have your internal polling. Go into these villages and hamlets and ask them, how did you vote? You voted against, let them go to constituencies that they did not do well and find out why they did not do well. When you get that information, you devise strategies to go after and win the hearts and minds of those people. <laughs> if you lost in Lo Yomi, have an internal polling and talk to the Lo Yomi electorate and find out. Don't be telling me that they stole the elections. You're setting up yourself to lose again. Go to Lo Yomi and okay. find out exactly why the people voted the way they voted. When you do that, your own <laughs> internal polling. <laughs> You strategize <laughs> and address those issues. I'm telling you, that is what a party that has brains, that's what you do. Can they win in 2026? Let me put it this way. If we, <laughs> if we come close to 2026 and it becomes a, a replay of 2021, with everybody and their father, independent candidates jumping into the fray, we're going to have the same results. If we want to avoid, avoid those results, then 
we need to scramble that a little bit. It can be done. Well, the scr- yeah. So, 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 Musa, I think, I think that is a you know, thank you for that succinct uh, analysis. Um, but I really, I really think uh, the the evolution in terms of political strategy <laughs> of, of a main political party it evolves. Lessons learned, applied, and there is a broader discussion. You know, uh, where do we go in terms of appeals and, uh, you know, how do we get a broader voters to vote for us, right? I, I think I think this is very, very critical. And I believe last time I spoke about this, about when uh, Dabo had a press conference and he, he said, this self righteousness, and 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 I think I think I think it's important to talk about self righteousness, right? You you can't hold dear and very rigid to the old folklore or urban legendary that didn't work in the past. So you can't. Now you got to evolve a little bit. The way you interact to voters, the way you talk to voters. You talk about the challenges. There's a lot of challenges in the game. You guys just said it. In terms of energy, it's a prepaid system. It's very expensive. It's unsustainable. Now, how do we turn that from being on the weakness side to a strength or opportunities for people? And I think, I think, I think this is where the messaging needs to evolve a little bit. It would be nice to inject some type of renewable energy in the Gambia, at least. I mean, the prices of energy comes down, at least there's a billing system, but we're all way of billing, but it, it, at least it's cheaper for people to sustain it. So, so I, think, I think there's a lot more that UDP as a party needs to articulate than just following the same template. Like doing the same business over and over and over, and and you know what is what is what is the meaning of insanity? Doing the same thing over and over, thinking of a different result. It's not going to work. And and you know it's 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 very very important for us to have a conversation here. And and someone to ask me whether it's true that this whole back and forth he left because UDP wants to make someone you know a party leader. I don't have any facts. What, what I can tell you is there was a lot of pseudo accounts that were set up on Facebook that were bringing statements or words of division within. And, you know, if, you are, if they welcome you and you are in an executive meeting as well, you need to comfort yourself. You cannot be in and be an outlier, Right. So, so even though I learned this in the military, even though we go in and, and we voted on something, we had a discussion, we'll have a spirited dis- discussion. We'll disagree with important issues. But when we walk out of that room, nobody goes in there and say, oh, I was against it. Somebody was, de- these people, I don't want to blame them for it. No, we sing the same song. It is unanimous and we united and we need to press forward. That's how it is. But, but, but if you think about it, that man had bring any type of change or made a lot of strikes within UDP, I would bet you talk to people who are very close. Day to day in discipline, not in agreement, an outlier bringing divisions upon divisions. And I don't know why they hold it so long. If this could have, somebody could have master courage and, and push it out and say, hey, this is more beyond some type of, you know, attention seeker, but we are looking it to do for the greater good of a country. And I think that's where my answer to you is, you know, I mean, if the majority, the majority, it looks like Gambians, the priority of Gambians want to change. Well, how do we move over there? I mean, there's equation that we need to all work together. Can UDP do it by themselves without involving other people? Can our appeal just for our support base? Uh, is that going to put us on the top without attracting more people on our side? 
this is something that we need to have a conversation. It's not going to take somebody say something that is against you or you don't dis you disagree with it. You go on social media platform and start insulting that person. That's not, that's not the way you're going to win that person's mind. You engage them and address their question, address their concerns. That's what a party needs to. Lawyer Dabo doesn't insult anyone. I mean, he, he said it right there. He doesn't insult them. Majority of those people, they, exist, they don't insult people. They, they talk to people. You need to appeal to people's hope. And, and I think it's very, very important, Musa, for us to talk about these things. Gambia is in dire straits. Yes, the infrastructure is there. He's doing that, but those infrastructures, let's look at, at depth, both domestic and international ratio. Where are we at right now? Let's talk about let's talk about our export ratio. Nada. We had the Minister of Finance here, he could not even justify. I mean, it's low. We 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 keep saying our agricultural agriculture, you got someone who is head in the agriculture sector as the minister, who is by every measure unqualified. He hasn't made any strides. He cannot talk about policy. He, he could not even lay out his vision two years, five years from now for self-sustainability. We got a lot of challenges. We got Jahali Pachar. Even if there's major crisis, and, and you know, we need to shift because there is global crisis right now. We got the Israel and Palestine war right now. And mm -hmm. it's gonna impact supply chain in the long run. Now, now all the ships, because ships usually when they leave here, they go through Red Sea to go to Europe, then to Gambia. Now they are diverting. It's taking longer duration. And what it's gonna do is gonna is gonna impact the global outlook, the economy in the long run. So 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 you need to think about, but you everything when they say gas is Everybody gets in up arms, but what are the plans to? Are we working towards, are we investing? We got youths living for back way. We got the agriculture sector whereby the government should spend a lot of money. We came there, and, and again, I have a lot of respect for Mr. Keith Ken, Kinde, but he talks about the grants and stuff, but those are grants, yes, they did. But what are we actually doing in order to Turn that negative to positive in terms of import and export. Zero. You guys just mentioned that even the groundwork, the people are struggling. What are we doing to fix it? That is the conversation that we need to have. A better infrastructure, better health care. You are giving a vehicle to some political guy, but ambulances are missing in the rural Hospitals. I saw a clip somewhere, I think it's in Janjambure. The guy was standing there talking about their challenges every day that they face, even you know, getting out there if somebody has an emergency and all that stuff. That two minutes, three minutes, five minutes is a difference in someone's life, right? So these are things that we need to focus on. What is the value audit? The government is an entity, it's running. But what value does it make? The what spending, spending, spending. You keep talking about we're gonna we're gonna tax the voters, we're gonna tax the citizens. But you keep traveling, expensive trips up on up on. You're not cutting spending, and I think this is the conversation people need to have. We need to talk to. Is your life better off? I, I understand the democracy part, but uh, is the average Gambian's life better off? What can we do to have a greater conversation to bring this tiny country, two, two million, the same status quo, same status quo is the same, is the sustained, make difference in people's lives. But that's not being done. And we are so fixated about some political guy who switched allegiance to some one person. And you know, that person, if you look at his track record, he's been doing the same thing. He's been, he switched back and forth, switched back and forth, switched back and forth, because that's his survivability method. 
-hmm. And I think the conversation, the national political discourse transcend more than what we are right now. I mean, people in Basse, people in Koina, people in Katong, they couldn't have better health care, better education. We got our national team who needs to fly out. They protest. They went in there and chartered a flight, which I believe didn't go through the normal safety routine checks. Got into air nine minutes before, and somebody didn't can be held accountable. And you call that seriousness? I mean, these are the issues that we need to talk about. And Gambia as a country, we all need to stand up. Diaspora, sending money, building this, making impact in the economy. No, everyone bang one is silent. We got a name, National Assembly, who is so inconsequential. All they do is pocket in, pocket out. They don't care about the average guy. And I hope we talk about these things and elevate the conversation a little bit and help what we can do differently. And, and I think it's all the political parties and our UDP in particular. I think the old way, appealing, doing the same old template, it's not gonna work. I'm telling you, it's not, yeah. and this self-righteousness, that it's not gonna work. I believe in this, I need to do this, I need, I think we need mm -hmm. to move away from that stuff, man. I'm just letting mm -hmm. you know, we need to move away from, the, we need to have a more innovative thinking and we need to be pragmatic and lay out a vision that is very compelling to the Gambian people that change means change. The life and livelihood of them and their families will be better off. Yeah, <clears throat> Sariang, I was just, this, this statement caught my attention from Humble Bambas. I know he's somebody, Humble Bambas, I don't know whether he's Bamba Mas, I doubt it, but he said, the areas that UDP lost are places that have this, this mindset, he said, or we'll rather be with you, that we'll rather be with the ruling party. And they have uh, zero interest, according to the guy, to be against government. And you always hear that, that, you know, you know most of these, especially in the, um, in the provinces, they don't vote against government. And then, and then he switched over and said, and here I am making a statement that the elections were not stolen. I don't even see what the connection is. There is this, with some of United Democratic Party supporters, they just want to believe that. It makes them feel good that um, they got 27% of the votes because the elections were stolen. <clears throat> and when you say it, they say, you see, there he goes again. They really, really, he really hates the United Democratic Party. No, I really want to see change because I've already said the present status quo as we know it, for me, cannot take Gambia to the next level that I would like to see Gambia. But I also know I'm pragmatic enough, looking at opposition as it is, it is going to be a steep hill. It's going to take a lot if Baro is going to be defeated. It ain't going to be easy. We've also said that the United Democratic Party and the NPP to some extent, their modus operandi is pretty much the same DNA. The United Democratic Party would have to win the hearts and minds of Gambians outside of their base. Lolo is a must. If they cannot do that, they will lose. Do they have small do they, do they have smart people that could put together policies under, let's say, for instance, the five-point agenda? I really do believe that. If they were to win, could they bring about change from a policy standpoint? I, re I really do believe that. But there is something about their politics that sometimes I am not absolutely convinced that even if they were to win, they wouldn't pretty much play the same politics that the MPP does. And that is, we're going to do whatever it takes to suffocate the opposition. And we're going to take care of our own, unless or not until you join the United Democratic Party. I am not absolutely convinced that it is the party that can transform. I haven't seen it yet. I'm yet to be convinced of that. Just because of their politics, the way they go about things.
the country needs change in 2026. And I absolutely believe that we cannot re-elect the APRC NPP coalition. No, that is not going to change. That's not going to change the country. But I also know that there is a perception by average Gambian that, and Bada would even say that. No, no, man, I'm going to do my politics. I'm going to develop my deck, develop my deck, I'm going to develop my deck. Then there are average people that really do believe that. You go to the URR and they see these highways and these roads and they say that this guy is delivering. You go to CRR, Sumamboki Fana Fana. I mean, <laughs> when they've never seen this asphalt road, you cannot convince them that this guy hasn't delivered. Trust me, it is going to be, it's going to take heavy lifting to do that. And most likely, if the elections become a choice election, like 2021, I can guarantee you, most likely, the incumbent will win. Well, it's not going to be a choice election. But that's, that's what I'm saying. It's going to be the status quo somebody, versus the future. Somebody is telling me, but we all need to do something about it. Yoro, Yoro, that's exactly... We are raising the real issues to tell you that this is the difficulty. We are raising the real And all hands, and all hands has to be on deck. It's going to take, it's going to take all of us to make it happen. Like most people, I'm not naive. I do know one of the most effective opposition that we have is the United Democratic Party. There was no way we could have won in 2021 without them. Possible, sir. Amut. Anybody who has followed this, who has gone through this journey with us. They've always been very outspoken. Their supporters are very committed. A good chunk of them are very committed. They've been there for a long time. What needs to be done is to run a different kind of race. I'm not <laughs> going to get into the details because that get me in trouble. <laughs> but it has to be. <laughs> they, know, they know it. I ran into a executive. <laughs> we had a lunch somewhere and the man was there. Your father, father, sister is always on my case, man. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> and I, um, I told him, what I think it would take for us to be able to stop this NPP APRC juggernaut, that this is what it's going to take for that thing to happen. If you remember a while back, I said, because for us Gambian and Hungaric, we all think nah, this is what we did in 2016, coalitional party, that's what we need to do. Well, it doesn't have to be the same way. We, may, we, can, we can tweak it. But unless we give Gambians a viable alternative, because, you know, Serian, you've spew, you've talked about the difficulties. You, we talk about the inflation. You talk about how the average Gambian has issues. We all talk about, if you go to the greater Banjul area, where the bulk of the votes are, the present status quo is not holding up. Kids are dying in the Mediterranean. Every Gambian wants to leave the country. So there's a reason why they want to leave. Things are hard. But unless and until you give them a viable alternative that they believe can win. You know why we won in, 2020, in, in, in 2016? Because we were able to give them a viable alternative that they believe can win. That would address our aspiration. So that's where we need to go back to. And we will never be able to do it without the United, United Democratic Party. <laughs> but the United Democratic Party will never be able to win in 2026 by relying on the same base that they've been relying going all the way back to 1996. And when I say base, people think it's a code word for, uh, he's just like, when I, that, that, oh, he's talking about the Mandinka base. Yes, to some extent. That's a very solid base. But that's not the only base, though. 
No, it's not the only base, but a good okay. chunk out of that 27%. Tell me, how much of it is the Mandinka base? I don't know. But you see, the reason why, you see, mature democracies like America, Obama, their pollsters would look at a community or a demographic voting block, and they say, okay, this is where we're weak. Our base, Obama, Obama knew that if he were to go to Mississippi, the black bills, the black, the black voter, the black electorate is his base. <laughs> but if he's going to be competitive in Mississippi, he also has to win. He also has to win the other demography <laughs> by appealing to them. <laughs> and for you to be able to do that, no, I mean, I mean, let's call it what it is. I'm telling oh, you. Musa, 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 I don't think I don't think you are fair here. Because here is the thing. It's not like I'm unfair. Is. I'm saying no, no, no. that even, even in the modern democracies, you got people who are not there. There are areas that are solid, reliable Republicans, and they are solid, reliable Democrats, regardless who is in the office. Regardless. But, okay. So why, are, okay. They, let me ask you: Why okay. am I? Why am I? Why am I unfair to say that the United Democratic Party relying on that base alone? And I'm not saying nay. They're only appealing to that base, but it looks like they're not doing the strategic what is needed to bring in these other voters. Now, if you say I, that, let me let me put it this way: if you say okay. that, well, the people of let's say, for instance, Jokadu, they're predominantly fullers, and that is why they're voting against us. I I I I I I think then you will not be in a very good position to go after that base. Because to be very honest with you, to be very honest with you, that is a base that you can also appeal to, to bring them over. But it's going to do a little bit of work. You will have to definitely. All I'm saying is, for UDP to have a chance of winning 2026, they have to be able to Appeal to other communities as well. <laughs> okay, Musa. So what is Musa, so unfair hey, about what is so unfair no, no, about no, no, that? No, okay, okay, okay. So so here's my rebuttal. So here's my rebuttal. It's a great conversation that we need to have, and that's really great. But here is the thing that I think there is a misconception, right? So if you say they have twenty seven percent of Mandinkas, for instance, I, I, I'm just going with what you no, said. I do, not, I do not say that. I'm saying no, 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 no. What, what I'm saying, majority. Let's say let's call it majority. Let's call yes. it majority. Let's call it for for the sake of argument here. So, where is those people? Because if you call Joe Cardo, I can tell you, Joe Cardo has Fullers, Joe Cardo has Serias, Joe Cardo has Mandinkas. You go to Farafeni, same thing. So, out of those demographics, if you tabulate, and this is really good conversation. So. People who voted, like Banju Nod, who has this young man who got who is a UDP. I mean, count those people. So so I, I am saying, I think if we're gonna diagnose the issue here, we need to move away from triangulating somehow a certain tribe. I mean, they didn't vote for UDP because they are they, they are associated with that. They voted for UDP because they, they believe in their policies. You see, you're they, younger, they, younger no, no, you younger no, 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 hold on. No, I am no, not. No, I'm, no, I'm, hold on. on a second. No, I want to appeal to. I, I just want to respond to this. Okay. Sarian, I okay. am not. I am not saying that Mandinkas. Their only motivation for voting for the UDP is because I did not say you say that. I no, because actually didn't say. What I am saying is, the twenty-seven percent of that people that voted for UDP. I can guarantee uh, you, nay, the majority are Mandinkas. That doesn't make them. To... No, no, no. no but hold would on. you use the same? The... No, no. Well, yes. Hold on a second. This, no, is, but... this is a very good conversation. No, no. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Would you use the same tabulation for PDOIs, for instance? I, I'm, not, I'm just asking. Would you come with a percentage and say this percentage, Akus or Wallops, this is the percentage they vote for PDOI, not because what they stand for and their core beliefs, but because somehow 
this see, percentage of this. I, I'm just asking. I just you are getting you are getting into the why they put you are getting into the motivation. What I am saying is, look at look at constituencies that UDP did very well. And let's qualify what it is. Get into politics. Or listen until you approach it with objectivity. Forget about forget about ne, one would be labeled ne, you're being tribalist. I'm just saying, and I'm showing it. Look, the UDP operatives that know the country very well, they know where their strong base is, where they will do well. So let's say, for instance, I was one of their, they hired me. I come into a constituency. I know that where my reliable base is, I know for me to win, I need to spend a lot of money on other areas. That is why I said, if I were them, I'll spend money on separates to have my internal polling to see why these people voted against me. <laughs> I am not saying, what I'm saying is, Sarian, to be very honest with you, out okay, of that 27%, out of that 27%, mm -hmm. it's not whether, mm -hmm. is it fair for you to just I mean, use it for UDP? Or how, how come you will not say the same thing for DOI? Look, <laughs> DOI got, I don't know, three, four, five percent of the votes. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. So, no, so no, what no. I'm saying all, all is... I wanted to understand is, your perspective let's, let's, a little let's, clearly. Let's look at NPP. I think NPP would be no, the right wanna, party I wanna, to use. I want I want to no, stick with I want to stick with you. No no, no no but let me mean more this argument this no, no, argument is very no, important. <laughs> it is. It is. I'm just saying <laughs> uh, look at look at NPP and look at UDP. All right? Barrow was in UDP. No doubt about okay. that. Mm -hmm. And a good chunk of the people that kind of followed him for the United Democratic Party they went into NPP. For Barrow, and this is not a question of for Barrow, you could say any, the majority of people that voted them, all right? The majority of the people that kind of voted them, the base is much more diverse. And that is not to say that UDP only appeal to Mandika voters. I'm just saying they are much more diverse than they say, for instance, the UDP, the UDP base. So for UDP to be able to win in 2026, all I'm saying is there has to be a crossover appeal. They have to do well. Let's say you said Jokadu. They have to do well with series. They have to do well with Wolof. They have to do well in Fanafana areas. That is the only okay. way. That is the only way that they can win come 2026. So 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 if no, you no, kind of no, tiptoe around the issues. Dara, Dara, there's no tiptoe here. We got to keep it real. We got to keep the conversation real. I think this is where you know, you we're going to get... People are saying... No, 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 no. This is where we're going to get Gambia forward. Hold on a second. So, so Musa, here's the question. If you 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 talk about Joe Kadu, for instance, last election... I was just using that as an example. No, 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 no. I get you. I get you. Get you using that as a baseline, which is okay. But what I'm trying to ask is... Out of that last election, how many actually voted out of Joe, Joe Kadu constituents? No, I mean, I, I don't even have that information. Okay, so okay, so, so that's that, okay. But, but where do you think? But, uh, do no, you know, no. where do you... <laughs> but give me a chance to ask you no, questions. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. So, so go here's, ahead. The, here's a question where that I'm asking. And, and I think this has nothing to do with whether I align or... No, I think we need to have a greater conversation. And here is the thing, the reason I'm provoking this conversation, I think we, ultimately where we are going, we're going to have a convergence of thoughts and we're going to agree. And hopefully we can change the strategy a little bit for everyone, including viewers who are voting here and who are voting out of the game. So here's the question. Where do you think past elections and everything, where the, the, whoever the candidate is, pull ahead? Where is the most votes where they pull ahead? And where the, the winner will be, the, the, the areas that the w decides to win us? Hold on, hold on. Keep talking, sorry. Keep talking. Okay, so, 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 so I, I, think, I, think, I think if we do a, prog a proper prognosis of what's going on, I think we'll come up with a better idea. Yes. Some people, I, I guess that. I guess that people have vo voted certain ways. I get all that. But now, is it because somebody, even though they have good policies, the people have core beliefs 
but we're going to vote against them because you associated them with a certain tribe. And, and I think this is a greater conversation. I'm very, very comfortable to have that in a conversation because I tell you what, I talk to other friends. They say, you know what, because of someone, you might have no. a good... That there is a mischaracterization when you said oh, that, about what? No, when you said your last statement that when you associate a party with a tribe, then that is not. But that's not what I'm doing. No, 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 no. What, what, what did I, I, can you can you can you paraphrase what I said last time? I, I think you probably okay, didn't hear me. What did I say? No, you see what I'm what I'm what I'm all all I'm saying all all the point that I'm making is. The point that I'm making is the United Democratic Party, going all the way back to 1996, they have a solid base that they can rely on. No doubt about that. It's not like they, they support us. strategies. Yeah, they have to support us. It's not like they okay. devise a strategy just to appeal to that base alone. That's not what I'm saying. They're reliable supporters. And the majority of them, and people don't want you, people don't want people to say that because if you say it, it means like, oh Ryan and you're tribalist. That's not what I'm saying. No, no, forget but about I'm, that. Speak your I'm, mind. I'm speaking speak my mind. mind. That is why yes, you know please, me. Please, that's I speak my mind. That's why say. I said yes. the majority yes. of their base, the majority mm -hmm. of the base, go to any constituency that is predominantly Mandinka. The UDP will do extremely well. All I'm saying is for our country to change, for us to be able to have a change government, the UDP, they will only be able to do that if they expand to go outside of the base, crossover appeal to other communities, because those other communities are feeling the same economic woes like their base. If they do that, then they will have a chance to win an election. That's all I'm saying. I'm not no, saying no, that. I'm not, I'm not saying, I I'm not, if you sit here and tell me, well, you know, how, how sure are you? That the base is predominantly Mandinka. You know. <laughs> yeah. no, no, I mean, I'm no, not telling no, you. No, I don't know. I, I really don't know. You no, know. Don't you I, know. <laughs> no, no, come on now. Let's no, not... no, no, Musa, Musa, hold on a second. Musa, you do on know a second. that. You I, do think, know. I, think, I think you are mixing apples and oranges. Hold on a second. One step at a time. I understand. I am I am not naive. I am not naive. People no, but you are who, but either, hold on a second. Either, hold on, hold on, you are not but naive, give me but you are to respond. But you want an honest conversation, but you're scared to have the honest conversation. No, so no, no. Why, around why, it. Why, I don't know. why am I going to be scared? But if you tell me that 27% base, the majority are not mandinkas, then, 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 you're young. Lam, lam, even, what, what, what I'm trying to say, I, don't, I think you are misunderstood. I think probably it's even more than that. But what is wrong with that? Nothing. What is the moral argument with that? Nothing. Nothing is wrong Thank with it. Thank you very much. The so only, the only one. But, bro, what we are saying is winning in 2026. You have your solid base. I wish, <laughs> I would love Musa. to, <laughs> Mayma, Mayma, <laughs> I would love okay. to form any party that is what is salt. You would want to be the place where UDP is. You want to have a solid base that come rain or sign, they're with you. Then what do you do? You moved and expand the base to win. It's much easier for UDP than any other party. Absolutely. Because they have a <laughs> solid base. No, no, no. That they are convinced, not because of ethnicity, but they are with them because of going all the way to 1996. The sacrifices. And to some extent, the ethnicity too. Just like Suruas, Serers, <laughs> like Senegal. Somebody was making an analysis and said, you know, this new, this new guy called Jumai Fai, the Pastef leader, he's saying, in fact, if Pastef were to nominate him, that is going to make a difference in Serer communities because they will see him as one of their own. Baby, that is just the reality. That is not to say you know, there's a moral argument or self-righteousness. I'm just saying this is part of the calculus. You have a base that you rely on, now, what you do is you win some hands of mine, you win the hearts <laughs> and minds outside of that base to be able to win an election. That's all I'm saying. So, Musa, yeah, go ahead. I'm not, here's the thing. I think probably what you're stuck on is I am not, for one minute, 
I am not naive. That, that is a reality. But what I also wanted to put out is having 50% or 60% of Mandinkas voting for UDP. There's nothing wrong with that. No, absolutely not. Okay, so 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 now we all agree absolutely on that. Not. Now, now, now here, okay, here, here's another question that I'm gonna pose to you. <laughs> I think we are getting somewhere here, and and, and it's good. It's good that we are having this conversation. <laughs> okay. <laughs> In fact, sir, no, 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 I think that it's a good thing, actually. Okay. Like okay. Said, okay. Any party, you would wonder. No, no, it's okay. Now, now we agree on something. Now let's move on to the next point. <laughs> At least we agree on that. That's not bad, right? So I think I think the major the one thing that I think we all need to, and and now today our argument needs to center around is, let's just not vote for a party because it's an identity politics. Oh, someone is a leader because he's a Mandinka. Oh, someone is a leader, is a wallop. Oh, someone is a leader, is a follow puller. I think the central thing, that's what I wanted to hit hard, is if the person is qualified and has policy, solid policy, that can bring change. As you said, he said, we need to move away from the old way of doing politics. Now, I'm on the pack. We need to upguard somebody. I think someone cannot speak Mandinka. It's not a disqualifier. As long as that person is a bona fide citizen of the Gambia. If someone is a fuller and she has all the credentials, you should not qualify someone out of that. And, but what do we do from here? The fact is we need to get that message that whoever is set on that, that somehow we cannot change for a better Gambia because we believe in somebody needs to be the leader. I think we need to move away from that thinking. I think I agree with that one. But someone is a solid base because they believe in it. As I said, even in the Western world, despite who is the president, those are solid, 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 reliable voting block. But that voting block alone will not put you at the top. You have to have independence and someone from other party to vote for you to put you at the top. I agree with that 100%. But how do we have a greater conversation moving forward from that? I think that's what it is. Don't sit there and say, we see a lot of comments here. P people buzzing, our, our brother, a big brother who is very educated, Matar Sajo, on Dabo's case, like Dabo is the only person. You know, you know. I, I think if we shift our thinking a little, you cannot critique people yeah. when you are stuck in the same old way of thinking. Because I think the party has been in Septon. But if you look at it, the one that he is alleging to and, 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 and support 100%, who has been the leader for many, many years. There's no changes. But I think as us, we have a greater conversation about this. We need to have a proper prognosis of the issue. If you are sitting there, you are a Democrat, and you are saying, we need change, we need to change. Well, I think at the leadership mantle too, we need to have a change. And I think we need to have a conversation. I am very open to have this conversation, but I think we cannot get here and be a moral adjudicator when we are all stuck in the old way of thinking. We need to shift. We, we need to shift. If, if someone, if, if I had to call my family back in Gambia and talk to them about voting, I'm not going to say don't vote for if someone else comes in as a party leader who is more qualified and has a great appeal. I'm not going to get on the phone and say, Vote against the person because he cannot speak Mandinka. He's not a real Mandinka guy. That is, that, is, that, is, that is just not right. And I think we need to have a conversation about this, Musa. And, and I think I'm very glad we are having this conversation right now because I think that is one of the problems. It doesn't matter whether you have a, a, a policy. It doesn't matter because they're associated with certain tribe and they will vote against you. And that's a fact. It's a truth. And unless and until we move away from that, then we will have a better Gambia for everyone. That's what it is. Tambo, I don't know whether you understand Maniga, but Tambo to Sembela Telala. So I think this is a good conversation, but I think it me, opens up all kinds of doors to have a me, good conversation. Let me say this. Okay. You know, 
I agree with you that if we're going to transform our politics, identity politics should not have any bearing. I absolutely agree with you. Seriously. If we're going to be able to transform that country and get a transformational leader, identity politics should not have any bearing. You are an idealist. That's not where we are. That's not where the electorate is. If you are going to win in 2026, identity politics is going to be part of the strategy. Hello, I'm sorry, but that's where we are. Any party that wants to win in 2026 and you ignore ethnicity voting, regional voting, you're in trouble. You're going to lose. You're going to lose big. We all know each other. I would feel, no, but we I'm all know, it's not where we want. It's not where we should be. It's where we are. All I'm saying, let's see how we, how did we even get into this? Because some people are saying, oh, let's go to Rizman Dinkati. <laughs> that's not, that's not, that's not how we get there. What I said was, for us to be able to bring about change in 2026. And the only viable vehicle at this juncture that I know of is the UDP vehicle. And what I'm saying is, going all the way back to 1996, that UDP vehicle hasn't seen winning an election because it's relying on, the only, it's only getting a base of the votes and that's not enough for them to win. So the only way they can win I May Marek is to no, expand agree, the base. I agree with that point. Now, you can, that point, yeah. you can say, nee, well, I'm sorry, but that's not, that's not UDP's problem. It's because these people are a bunch of tribalists and dismiss them. Okay, fine. You're right. Maybe they're a bunch of tribalists. They are. I did not say that. No, no, no I know you did not say that. But I'm saying if the response <laughs> of a political party that wants to win is that, look, Nun, what we have is a program and policies. And UDP is always saying that. You know what I mean? It's a diverse party. All the ethnic groups are there. I get that. But the reality is, he has a base support, and for them to win, they have to expand the base. Lolo Moy Biga. That is the not, not. How do you do that? That's where the challenge is. To win elections, you're going to have a lot of money. No doubt about that. What I would do with that money. Yes, I will hold on to my base, no doubt about that. But I will try to devise strategies. How do I bring these other communities that I am the solution? I want to win their hearts and minds that we are going to transform Gambia for everybody. You have to be able to convince them by just resorting there. Well, you guys are a bunch of tribalists, and that's why you don't want to vote, or, vote for us. Uh, you can say that all you want, but you're going to keep losing elections. Why do you think the NPP, why do you think? they went back to that low common denominator, that tribal politics. Why do you think they did that? They know exactly what they were doing. Because I, go, I, I really get to the nitty gritty, the reality. They use Identity politics. No, can 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 lam lame you I'm not going to lam lame. No, no, we're keeping it real. I'm not talking about you. You're keeping it real. Trust me. <laughs> you gotta I'm, keep I'm, it real. This is a conversation I'm very happy to have my friend. anywhere. My friend. <laughs> we all know, you and I do agree, that for UDP to win, they have to expand their base. But the question is, they have to cross over appeal to other communities. The question now is, what does that mean? <laughs> Hamga, that's where it gets, that's where it gets difficult. It's easy to say that everybody knows that UDP is not all the, the executive is not only Mantikas, it's diverse. We all know that. We all know that. The question is, what are the strategies that you're going to use to appeal to other communities to take that 27%, add 7 and 20% from those other communities to be able to defeat Barocom 2026? That's where the challenge is. How do you do that? Are you going to do that by saying that the elections were stolen? Go ahead and say that. You will never find solutions. 
Are you going to do that okay. by saying, well, it's not our problem if Gambia... Well, the elections are not stolen. We got to put that no, to bed. No, no. It's not stolen. But yeah, it's not stolen. So let's move what, on. But bro... I don't well, want to get stuck into the election. Let's talk about the future. Yes. Well, let me, the well, let me ask you, well, say he won't. Well, let me ask you, let me ask you this. Is the party saying that the elections are not stolen? Which party? You are the Democratic Party. Which party are we talking about? I am speaking. Forget I about am you. Speaking as as no 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 no. I'm not gonna. I, no 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 no. I'm not gonna speak. No, you on behalf me. of UDP. Let's forget on this. about. Let's forget about that the elections are stolen. But what I'm saying is the reason but why I'm bringing said, it up. What? But what? Here is the thing. What argument? What? What is that gonna do? Is it gonna do undo the election that's already been passed? I think oh, we need bro. to look forward. But yeah. If you're gonna look forward, you're gonna come up with strategies and solutions. If you're stuck, but the only reason we lost, the elections were stolen, then what you are trying to do, because if he lives in Lamin Mane on coffee time, you're bringing people that I want us to have a greater discussion. We need to. But we are in a greater discussion. They don't know, but one day they have to come on this platform and 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 and, no, no, and, and stand no, on no, what they're no, saying. Yo, 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 no, 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 no. But what I'm yo, trying to say is, yo, you're not I listening think, to I what I'm I saying. I listen to, I listen to, I listen to Lamin Dab, Lamin, to, Lamin, Lamin to Mani on coffee time when he even talk about security sector reform, and I disagree bro. with him. What what he does say that? Yeah, no. I'm I'm talking talking to... Lima la uh -huh. uh -huh. When a party. When a party loses an election, whether it's the Democrats or the Republicans, normally what they do is they'll go to, they'll go behind the scenes. They will do a retreat, and they will kind of talk about <laughs> why did we lose. The point that I'm trying to make is, when you're saying that the only reason why we lost is because the elections were stolen, then you are not going to do a proper diagnosis of why you lost. Because the elections were stolen, I, and you're going to spend. I, I think. Your... I think that's that's a, that's that's an assumption. I mean, I, mean, I think there is a lot of work that has gone. Now you, because you can say if you're not anal analysis has been done, and there is work still that needs to be done. I think we. What I'm trying to draw your attention is, don't draw any conclusion yet. There is a lot of work that. Hold I am on not... a second. There is a lot of. I am not drawing I mean, any conclusion. I'm not going to sit here and tell you there is going to be a change of uh, leadership, and I'm not going to speculate anything. But no, what I'm trying no. to say is, I think, I, I, hold on a second. I think you are mirroring the conversation into this argument about the election, and I think there's a lot of fundraising that's happening. There's a lot of restructuring that is happening. So I really think just sitting out here and saying, "Oh, you need to go back." Well, they went back. There's lessons learned. We even well, talk about this. But that, doesn't, mean... but that doesn't mean that. All I said is this. 2021 elections were over. All I heard until today, even what's his name, Sol Baji, right now. <laughs> hold on. Sol Baji, right now. Yes, the UDP has tangible evidence to prove that it is important to have Sani. Uh, these elections were stolen. We have no democracy in the Gambia. All I'm saying is this. All I'm saying is this. Sarian, like you, honest to God, I would like to see change in the Gambia come 2026. Because, man, like I said, the NPP APRC is not the solution to transform that country to the next level. I also said that the, at this juncture, at this juncture, the only viable vehicle that will bring about that change is the UDP vehicle. I also did say that relying on that base that they relied on for the past six elections is not going to take them there. Then the solution is we have to do a crossover appeal. Then Manila, yes, and I'm sure that UDP knows that. The question is, how do you do that? That's where the challenge is. That's where they need strategies to wear their hearts and say, okay, we did not do well in Upper Nyomi, or we did not do well in Lower Nyomi, or we did not do well in Lower Salum, or we did not, why are we so competitive in Jara Central? We look at the voting patterns. We work on our, our strategies. 
when you do that, we do a total overhaul. You look at the candidate. Is the same candidate like President Amamina, I mean, uh, Mr. Dabo, is he the same person that can take them there? These are honest questions that need to be asked if you want to win an election. Candidate selection, do you believe that should be part of the calculus? Are you asking me? Yes. Well, I, I guess it should be, but what I'm trying to say is also is you are drawing conclusions and two years before, they, no, no, Musa, Musa, you gotta be fair, especially I am not part of the executive. I, I don't, but I also understand that the thinking needs to shift. And I can guarantee you the popularity, the majority gets there and majority wins to win. And if you want to win, you got to change. You got to talk in a language that is going to appeal, appeal to people. Exactly. But, I'm, but I'm, I'm not drawing conclusions. I'm reinforcing what I think. What I'm trying is going to, to say take. is don't get, don't get, don't get stuck. Don't get hang up on things that you and I both don't have control over. But what I'm trying to say is the fact that the thinking, the people who are involved in day-to-day -to -day mm -hmm. running gets the message. And I think you will see a gradual change in okay, coming you months. Can, I'm, and... I'm, not, I'm not aware of the internal workings of the UDP and what they're developing or what they're not developing. I'm, be, I'm an analyst, a political pundit ben who I, looked at. If you want, hold on, on. If you want, at, hold on, if you want, if you want to be up who to look this, at, who you look can at, call me and talk to me. No, I appreciate your political pronouncements, public pronouncements. I mean, public pronouncements that I'm hearing, and I'm telling you that those public pronouncements, I think, the same playbook in 2021 will not definitely give us the change. Bob Ture is saying which I totally agree. Musa Jeng join us to go to Kau and then, then, then appeal to those in the Salom area. Again, that is not a crazy assumption. Really, that is, it, it is not. Like I said, by taking internal polling, having separates, going into the Salom constituency, because they're having the same problems. They do, <laughs> like any other constituency. This they don't have to take suppers. That's what I'm trying no, to say. Don't, no, no, don't, no, hold don't. on. They don't have to. Uh, they don't have to. You know why I'm talking about separates? I'm talking about any internal polling. It could be. Yeah, it doesn't but, have but, to but be separates. It doesn't. No, you're Musa, arguing on. Musa, you're wait. arguing on. You're oh, no, arguing I'm not on. I'm not, I'm, I'm, no, 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 no. You're, I am. Are you no, trying you're to arguing telegram. on things. You're arguing no, on no, things. No, I am not arguing. What I'm trying to caution you is, Musa, I know where your heart lies. But I think sometimes you are a little overzealous. And I really think somehow there is work in place. Issues have been identified. Lessons learned. And those lessons need to be applied. What I'm trying to say is the notion that elections are stolen. People move away from that because that's not going to undo the election. I don't care who said it on this platform a million times. No, he's not going to vacate state house. That's how I hold it. And that's how many people hold it. It's not going to undo the elections. Let's move away from that. Now, the things that you are talking about, going into a cow, talking to voters, appealing to them, talking to them about the economy disparity and all that stuff, that's great. But what I'm trying to say is, we are we're getting too hung up on this election day because there are people who are capable of thinking and shifting. So that's what I'm trying to say. I am not, I don't have the definite answer. And I'm very, I'm very honest about I it. Can, I don't have the definite answer. I, I think the conversation, the conversation can, here is and the push. I can, I, I, can, the push. I, can, I can tell you, every public official, I've listened to all UDP interviews. They've never moved away from that the elections were not stolen, were not stolen. They will never move away from that. Just like Donald Trump will never move away from 2020 elections were stolen. All I'm you saying know, is they can say that. No, no, mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm just saying, I mean, to, you see, public what pro this is what somebody said. No, 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 the point is this. Yeah. Hold on. The point is, isn't Bernard Mendy? I think he got it. Yeah, Sorry, well, the you point know, is, he's been saying stuff. If 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 you're stuck with argument of stolen elections, your strategy is will mirror exactly that. Understand what I mean? I know you hold a different view. However, you, you hold a different view. But Mr. Mane, 
He was on, no, this is not exactly, I mean, uh, this is somebody who speaks for the UDP. He was on coffee time, making analysis. I am telling you, <laughs> this guy, he's even talking about, they have, they have a solution to that problem. And what he said was, they have a computerized system, a system in place where if the, um, from any pooling station, the results will be sent directly to them electronically and they'll put it in their database. <laughs> so this man is telling us because they didn't have that and that is why they lost the election. Okay, now now here's my here's now, my question to that. I'm not drawing any no, no, conclusions. Hold on a second. Their no, public, no, no, hold on, their hold public on. pronouncements, what? hold on, their public okay. pronouncements, their public pronouncements, and all I'm saying is, even if you use that to as a strategy so that your supporters don't discourage, they will not be discouraged. They will not leave the party. I mean, you just have to say that. Fine. But you say it and you get it over with. You don't keep coming and making it as a public pronouncement. Okay. What they are doing behind this, I don't know that. But that should not stop me by saying that for them to win no, an election. You have the right to say that and you have this is, the right this, to take this what, this is what it's going to take. That doesn't mean I'm drawing any conclusions. I'm, I'm not saying that they're not doing that. Here, here's, a, here's, a, here's, a, here's, here's what we can agree on. What Mr. Manny said, I didn't listen to his soundbite on that one. But what I'm trying to say is what he's saying, what is different from the current practice? Because right now, what, what, what is their, what is their uh, modus operandi? If voting tab, vo votes are voted and counted. What is what what is what is the way? Who is in charge of that? Who oversees those things? Is the IEC right? So 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 everyone, everyone, the votes get counted, transparent, right there. Everyone is out there, and and, and you know sometimes I, I I have my own way of how I see things, and everyone is entitled to that. But what I'm trying to say is, what is different? Because what he's saying is the information is going to come from somewhere to him. Yes. Well, he has a representative right there, right? So when the votes are voted and counted, each representative is out there. The IEC official who counts the vote is out there, and everybody has oh, no, 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 the no, 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 no. But don't, don't, don't. You lay out your argument, but this is my rebuttal. I'm not going to put too much weight on what he said. What I'm trying to say is the votes are voted. Each party has a representative out there. The start where it counts are tabulated, you sign off on it, then you send it to the election headquarters. That's not going to change. That is the modus operandi of IEC. Mr. Marong, soldier, I know that. You know that. Bubakar Siddiqui was on this program, basically amplifying the same position that Mr. Mane, the yeah. same thing. He was here. He said it. You heard him. He said <laughs> the only reason why they lost it's because of how okay. those votes were being... Buba is entitled to his opinion. Mr. Mane is entitled to his opinion. Musa Jeng is right here on For the People, By the People, and Sari and Mara. We're all entitled to our opinion. But again, is that the general consensus everybody share? Is that the operator modus operandi that the EIEC deploy currently? No. No. It's but, not going to change anything. But, but, but that's but, where but that's the I party. Agree. Hold on a second. The this party, is where... But that's the party position, though. No, no, no. That's the United no, no, Democratic no, no, Party no, position. No, no, no. You but have your opinion. Team, you have your opinion as, you have your opinion as, 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 as I mean, as Sariang Marong. But the party, the party, their position is. No, the you're election. wrong, man. You're, 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 but you're, Musa, I can tell you right now, a lot of people hold this view that UDP has a lot of work to do to appeal to earn the votes, not entitled to it. Okay. So I am just letting you know that okay. using a sound by calling Mubuakar C, Mr. Barrow, uh, Mr. Mane, I mean, well, that's not the priority of UDP. That's not, I'm just so looking. Let me, the let facts, me, the let facts me, remains the same. Let, the me ask your, remains. let me ask your opinion of something that Madal Sajjo said. Okay. Mm -hmm. He said UDP lost because Dabo has a relatability issue, yet they continue to start fervently behind him. Do you think then the problem is Dabo for the I will election? not, I will not give, to be honest with you, I will not give any relevance to that question. 
I've Why already not? answered it. I mean, I've, there's no reason for me to give a relevant. No, no, no. The but guy is. Answer the, hold on a second. No, no, you answer the question. Of, no, no, hold on a second. I had a lot of respect for Matar, but Matar's view is out of mainstream. This no, is do you guy, believe? Yeah. But do you no, believe? I, 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 you, I am now going believe? to answer that no, question. No, Why not? That, no, why would I answer no, forget that? Forget about Madan out of the equation. I'm no, asking I you a question. Not, do you you believe? should not not ask me. We're <laughs> debating. There's a lot of questions <laughs> that you did not answer. Why would I answer that question? No, like what? But every question you ask me, I but answer you know, it. Matar is saying reluctantly, whatever. Matar, which party does, does Matar support? Well, which I don't know. Does he support? But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, but why it is he doesn't asking matter. me that question? The question Matar didn't even ask no, this question. The question you are is, the one who is asking it. Because I don't want, I don't want the debate to mere to Dabo and Mr. Mane and Bubakasi. This is a greater conversation we all need to have. I Bro, just don't want that. You cannot, you cannot, you cannot have what? a greater conversation in 2026 without talking about candidate selection. I think that's a cop out. But you Seriously. are not, you, you are not in charge of that. I am not in charge oh, no, of no, that. No, 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 but we have opinions. I let people who made the decision at the appropriate time make the decision. But we and have to, in, we have to influence the decision. It would be different. By, no, but I'm saying we have to influence the decision by saying that going to the same person Elections after elections. You want me to preempt an answer hypothetical. I'm not going to do that. That's not how I operate. That's not, I'm not going to do that. No, I'm not. I'm not going to give you something. No. to. Say. I am not going to do that. I am telling you, I don't have the votes. I'm not part of the delegates. I'm not part of the executive. At the appropriate time, the people who have been entrusted to make such decisions <laughs> will make the Dude, right decision. When we do on this program, we make analysis of decisions that are not That's yet fine. made. You can make, but I'm and we can analysis. do the pro and the cons. You're saying you're not going to have an opinion because that belongs to some because people. Because I am entitled. So that I, am to me is a... <laughs> I am not going to preempt. I am not preempt no answer. Anything. No, I am not. A hypothetical, I'm not doing that stuff. Well, that's what I'm trying to no, tell you. You want me to say something? No, let me ask you. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me ask you a general okay. question. Uh -huh. Do you believe that, because we said that, um, the party would come up with a different strategy, right? Again. Different from, yes. hold on, different yeah. from 2021 in Correct. order to be able to be formidable come 2026. Correct. Okay. What are those strategies? What are those issues that you think well, are the crux of that? The Just a general that Deep dive, deep dive mm -hmm. of the areas that we didn't have strength areas that we have pitfalls and take those strengths and weaknesses and build into strengths. What and that's mean? what it is. That's what I, I said. Platitudes. Gradually. All I'm hearing is platitudes. All I'm hearing is general platitudes. What I'm trying I'm to, not Musa, hearing. What are no, those? Musa, what Musa, are those? No, no, Musa. Musa, here is the thing. I can guarantee you. I don't know who you talk to. I don't, I don't know, know where you get your perception from. Well, hold on a second. But you asked me a question. What I'm trying to say, there is a lot of work that's happening. And I believe those people who are doing the work, who are the foot soldiers, who go door to door knocking, talking to people, I have faith in them. And I will let them execute their no, plan. No, I'm not going to preempt. That's, that's, that, it's, not a, it's not about that. All I'm saying is, <laughs> we are not preempting anything. Again, Demba Jao <laughs> has an opinion. He said, Musa Jeng, Dabo is the most viable candidate in UDP. One, one you know, can you keep, you keep reading, you read, I, I no, want I'm reading. To, I want, no, because I want us to center <laughs> on a greater conversation, Musa. And then UDP Bob Ture, is bigger. Bob Ture, hold on. Bob Ture said, we will not change Dabo for the record. If you all want to vote against and do exactly like you did before, so be it. He's our leader and candidate, period. Okay, but 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 he's entitled to his opinion. Why couldn't he speak freely? No, no, no. I know, and I respect that. No, no. But what I'm asking but you, what, what is wrong with him expressing his opinion on a public domain? Nothing. The only okay, thing that is you. wrong with it. The only thing that is wrong with it. <laughs> do you want to know that? Do you want me to well, tell what's you wrong that? with it? What's wrong with it? Because it's not going to bring about change come 2026. If do you Boba, believe that? No, no, no. Hold on a second. No, I'm not. Do you believe that? that? 
If Booba, ah, if Booba as a chairman, Papa. no, hold on a second. Papa. Hey, hold on a second. Bob Ture said, Bob Ture said, we will not change Dabo for the record. Okay? If you all want to vote against and do exactly like you did before, so be. He is our leader and candidate. Do you subscribe to that assertion? <laughs> and don't wiggle out of it. Don't cop out. But do you no, subscribe but, but, to that assertion? No, no, but, but, but guess what? Bob is Ture is not a dele he's not a delegate. It doesn't matter. It does, but no, he's a no, chairman. But he's, he's a chairman. He he's an important person. Bob Ture okay. is not just your. What I'm saying is, do you subscribe to his assertion? So he's what his assertion? What I just said. What My friend, you didn't so hear what, what I read? What I, here is what here is what ah, I'm trying to tell you. Young, yeah, yeah. No, no, yeah, I'm yeah. going. You know, Musa, 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 Musa. You know, you know all the strategies that you're talking. Let me let me address your thing, I, and I think I will address this. But succinctly. I wanna. But you no, owe no, me an answer. answer. No, no, hold on, 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 hold for no, what no, Dr. Ray said. Okay. Well, you owe me an thing. answer. Do you politics, subscribe? Politics, do you subscribe politics, to that assertion? Politics. Do you subscribe you to that assertion? To, just just the, the the platitude and the overzealous statements that you gotta look at beyond that though. Bob is expressing what he wants to express. But is that square with reality? I'm asking you that. No, no, I'm not. I'm not gonna. But I'm throwing this question back to you. I have answered it. I did you hear what I said? With that well, kind I, of I, thinking, you know, we are not going to bring about change come 2026. What kind of thinking what, is that? No money. The thinking that he's asserting, <laughs> Bob Bob Tree. What he just said, that is doom for us losing in 2026. What do you think? <laughs> ah, no, you don't no, want to no, answer well, it. A, wait, no, no, you no, no. Not want to answer it. No, 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 no. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. What I want to tell you, my... viewers. No, no, viewers, no, 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 no. Are you guys no, 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 listening no, 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 to Sorry I'm Wrong? Now, do you want my answer? Yes. Do you want my answer? Yes. Give me a chance to give me a chance to respond. Answer. answer give me a chance to respond. Please. Okay. Musa, Faramo's chief strategist. Yes. My answer is yes. not diff again. The people who are entrusted to make that decision at the appropriate time. I have full confidence. At some point, when they made that decision, it would be in the best interest of the party and Gambia at large. That's my answer to your question. <laughs> you didn't answer my question. Okay, well, yeah, you didn't like the, my answer, but I answer no, it. It's not what I Oh, I know that the people <laughs> on the right time, they will do the right thing. That's not my question. My question is, Bob Ture, chairman of... I mean, he's a chairperson. You know, I mean, Bob Ture is no ordinary person. He said what he said. What, all why, I'm... why are you asking me what Bob Ture is? So when you can send a link to Bob Ture to come on the show and answer his question and defend no, his Bob position? Ture, no, I don't need to ask him. He no, 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 but, but why are you no, putting me? Bob why Ture, are you fisted on a question Ture, that somebody asked Bob Ture, is online Bob, right now? Send him a link. <laughs> no. Send him a link to come on the no, program. No, Big Luma, Bob I, Ture, I don't owe him any question because he made his I position. Know what I no, Big Luma, he made his position very clear. That on the record, Dabo is their candidate. And if people vote, the people that voted against UDP want to go back and vote for UDP, that's their problem. But for them, he said, Dabo is their candidate. <laughs> so, man, you don't to ask him any question. My position is, you know, as analysts on this program, all right, do you. Musa, but you, Musa, you, do are, you, you, want, you want me to sit here. And pre what I'm trying to tell you is, I think at the very end, I think when I open this segue, we talk about political rivalry. No, no, no. Let me summarize for you. And I tell you that I am not naive. <laughs> right? I'm not naive. I know, I know, I know, I know what it's going to take to win 2026. And what is that? that? I know. I'm very, very clear. And, and what is that? But I'm not going to sit here. What is that? And preempt. No, but what I'm is that? Preempt. No, no, don't preempt pre anything. Gonna, yes, what you is it going to take to win? Bob Torres, Bob Torres, right, Bob Torres statement on public domain. Send a link to Bob Torres to come on the show and answer no, his bro, question. You said you are not naive and you I know don't, exactly. I don't, I don't have no, hold to on. agree with him. All no, no, okay. He can come on the okay. program. Okay, and fine. What is about Bob Torres? You said yes. you are not uh -huh. naive and you know exactly what it's going to take to win 2026. What is that? Yes. To appeal. 
to the aspiration and hopes of Gambia and build a persuasive <laughs> argument based on solid policy. Platitudes. Platitudes. No, it's not. I, you know, yeah, yeah. Oh, come Plastitude. on, I've been around. I, you, you, know, you know, you know, you know what you want. UDP no, has not policies and programs come 2021. Trust me, they have very solid policies. Five point agenda. They laid it out at the at the conference center. Very apt. They do have that. Well, they that's need not a problem. They, they need to they need to do retail politicking. You write a five point do agenda. That. What do, what does that mean? Do you that. gotta be able to speak they in do, local languages. Go to, no, 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 no. You gotta go door to door and appeal to, the, to those voters. So I'm not, I'm not here. What you want me to say, I am not no. going to say it because I don't have that liberty bro. to say anything bro. that I don't have bro. tax on. Bro, bro, bro. <laughs> I do not want you to say anything. All I'm asking is two questions I ask. One was an assertion from Bob today that as an analyst, I'm laying, I'm saying, is Invite Bob Ture to come on the platform and answer his no, question. No, 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 I don't need that. I'm not coming, I just got to drink some water. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> you, need, you, you need it. Ladies and gentlemen no, no, of the I jury. I don't need it. I don't need it. Lady, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, my, my position is very clear. That for us to change in 2026, it cannot be the same election as 2021. I agree, if 100%. We, if we run the same elections, then definitely Baro will be re-elected. And that playbook includes a lot of things. Candidate selection is one of them. The kind of strategies that you implore to win the hearts and minds of Gambians is another thing. Gambia is in a bad shape. I just left there three days ago. The future is bleak as far as I'm concerned. In as much as some people believe that road construction, Baro is doing a lot. But Gambia is still in a mess. Yes, our democracy is evolving. Yes, people are freer. No doubt about that. The population, one can really tap into that and bring about change. But we will never be able to do that with that same playbook. It's not going to work. And I'm asking my fellow comrade here, simple question. And he's waffling, telling I me- don't have, People who I know me, trust, I don't waffle, man. I really I trust, don't waffle. You're waffling. I don't waffle, <laughs> I don't, I don't waffle man. <laughs> you don't want to hear the answer I'm giving you, but I didn't waffle. <laughs> So all of a sudden, this guy said, I'm here representing NPP. I don't know how I did that. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I said, I want change. APRC, I mean, uh, APRC NPP coalition is not the solution to our country, but this person still believes that I represent NPP. Nah. Because you I don't were know speaking about all that. the develop you were the first time when you what got is on the, the truth? platform, you were speaking of all the glories the, and how is the beautify truth? how there what is no, the there's real See, democracy. No, what is the truth? Hamdaman. Okay. I give the devil its due, but I also know when I said it, from 2016 to now, this government has done their part. They are not now <laughs> the solution to where the country needs to go. It has to be in the hands of someone else. It cannot be the Sidi Jais, the Fabakan Tombong Jatas, the Adam Barros, that clique of politicians will not bring about the transformation that the country needs. It has to be different for that to happen. That's where I want the country to be. So I have every right to say that playbook is not going to give us victory. I've been up Lola. Don't get stuck on the past. We have to evolve. Politics is evolu evolution and it's gradual, right? So you and I both know that. So what I'm trying to say is <laughs> lessons learned applied 
and and and, and you're gonna you're gonna see a total different okay. outcome, Musa. And and, and now, I think I think if I think, they... I think I think also what I'm trying to say is I think I sat on this platform. I don't waffle. I don't do. No. What I'm trying to say is there is managing of expectation, and here is the thing. And and this is a greater conversation that I was gonna land. And to the UDP folks, you need to be very careful. We need to be very, very careful. This party of Dr. C.C. Solo Sanding, Lamin Marong, Nogunjai. They went out there, even though they knew they were going to face with a brutal assault by the dictator. But they mastered the courage and integrity and the character. They shoulder on. Whatever consequence they fought, face, they knew that was the best decision because they look at themselves beyond just me, 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 me. They went out there to fight. And, and, and a lot of other people, the Halifas, the Oye Gyalos, Didier Gattis, a lot of people. We need to carry on their mantle. We need to fight. The struggle is never easy. There's a lot of people who passed away. There's a lot of orphans who don't know their dads, their moms. But we should not compromise. I hear Musa again. I heard you. It's a lot unclear. I know where your passion lies. We have a different way. There's two ways to skin the card. I get it. But one thing, I'm not going to question your passion and your love for the country. I am not going to do that. So as Coach Pasan Bajo, so as the other people who are commenting on this forum. But one thing is real. We all keep talking, Gambia deserves better. Gambia can do better. We're not going to let the people who were out there assaulting our rights, aligning with the worst dictator in modern century, to take away our rights, our democracy. And I think the conversation needs to move on. But I'm going to tell you, a couple of weeks ago, I've watched online, I've watched people who, who keep accusing people. Rohi Malik Law is going to go to MPP. This and this and this and this. Talib is going. al Mame Funding Tal is going. Be careful of such accusation because it doesn't do any good to the party. What it brings is division upon division. There is no facts to it. I can tell you this with absolute certainty. Rohi Law ain't going nowhere. A lightweight politician like sitting guy, it's not going to pull Rohi Law Malik Law. Rohi Law has been with the party since 1996. They, they, every major party, you got disagreements. But let's, let's tone down our rhetoric. If we cannot solve issues, we engage people privately and talk to them. You can't stand on public platform insulting people and saying, those people are going away. What is Barrow going to do for Rohilo? She's a mayor, biggest city. She got re uh, recognition worldwide. We need to be careful. 2026 is dedicated. I, I, I get it. I really get it. But one thing we got to be careful is let's tone down the divisive rhetoric. Let's bring people together. People who are not voting for us. Musa Jain sits on this platform and say all these things. I disagree with him, yes. But I also respect him. Because I think what he's saying is a step from a standpoint of objectivity and his observation that he's trying to provoke a greater conversation for us to come together. So calling people names, telling people somebody is against it, I don't think that's true. Let's move away from these things. And people who are not comfortable engaging you will call me maybe after this program and say, hey, you know, Hey, what you are saying is true. Because this is the problem. You got to look at those things. At the end of the day, you want to increase your numbers. You want to bring people in. Even your own people, look after them. 
Don't try to go after people when you don't have the facts. You, you, you're doing day-to-day -day accusation, accusation. That's why people hold themselves. Sometimes you see their reactions. It's not because they want to do that, because what they've been hearing. So let's be careful about that. And I think that's where my summary of today's session is. And um, Musa, you try very, very hard <laughs> to push me to say something that I was not prepared to say. You try hard, and I can just give it to you. But at the end of the day, as I said, I truly and honestly believe you have Gambia at heart and you passionately care about people. Musa Yen has been president. You know, sometimes you don't want to talk about this, blah, blah, blah. But, but people got to talk about some of the things. This man was the president at a, in Nigeria, in Atlanta. He doesn't know a Surwa. He doesn't know a Fula. He doesn't know a Mandinko. He does, most of his supporters, he doesn't think I know that. Most of his supporters are from the Stan UTB supporters. Because of when there is a dead in the in, in Atlanta community, when there's a medical emergency, somebody cannot pay his rent, someone has an immigration issue, he stood for them. So let's be careful, not be judgmental about people, insulting people and trying to draw conclusions. One soundbite doesn't determine the man's character or his integrity. With that, Father Moose, I yield. You're a good man. <laughs> You're a good man. But I'm still gonna ask the question. Do you subscribe to <laughs> well sorry <clears throat> with all seriousness? I'm glad we have this conversation. And I know you were talking not to me, but to your UDP supporters. You mentioned something like Rohi Lo. You know, every party usually they have their own internal wranglings and jockeying. I told Pa Samba. <clears throat> When Sabani left and there was a lot of talk about Rohilo, I'm like, Rohilo ain't going nowhere. See, Rohi's politics is a little bit different. Seriously. Rohi is not going to pack stuff and say, I'm going to join NPP. Eh, no. Bro, you are as attractive when you're on the other side. Rohi is not going to do that. He's much savvier than that. What she is doing, that's how exactly she loves it. She's still UDP. You know, not going to tell her what to do or what not to do. She's doing her politics. The mayor Banyul, they'll see her with battle. <laughs> with the first lady, she's doing her thing. That doesn't mean elegant to be the bad them join. Ah, do Gawe no nude. Roy is not going to jump ship like that. I agree. Well, I'm not, that's not even my, my, my thing is, Sarian, I mean, coming from the Gambia, some of the things that I said that are positive, they're true. <clears throat> On coffee time, I said, oh, when, I, when, I, when I used to go to Gambia, <laughs> no, seriously. I no, 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 I'm to... laughing at Musa Matari. He's provoking me. He's a Mawaji. Look, one thing, one thing is for sure. United Democratic Party can never win an election without doubt. Absolutely not. He Cannot is win the, an election without Dabo. Without said. Dabo. It doesn't mean that Dabo has to be the candidate. You got to listen to me. I'm listening. UD, UDP will I not just need win. clarification, Rick. Very easy. Very easy. Because believe me, I got this thing down to the what it's going to take to win. Dabo is the most important leader within the United Democratic Party in, in the country. Is a well-known commodity. Is a man that sacrifice. It's not patronizing. It's the honest God. You will never be able to win without him. But you also would have to win without him leading the party as a candidate. Sol Baji is calling me, even though we're getting off soon. Sol, he wants to talk. <laughs> Sol. Uh... <laughs> No, he uh, wants you to send him a link. <laughs> Let me send him the link. I don't mind sending the link. But the point I'm making is... No, it's uh -huh. I'm going to. There is no way UDP can win without him. Absolutely not. He's their best person out there. But also, they cannot win with him as flag bearer. 
Do you agree to what I just said or not? Say it again. <laughs> <laughs> but, but what do you want my affirmation in that? I, I, no, I was asking, asking you. When you say, what do no, you say? I don't. I, I, I'm listening, and the boy, the, the 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 viewers are listening. A lot of people are listening. They've been listening for a while. Because so you see. know, just just go ahead, go go ahead, and uh, you know. Do you think so? Budget, so you don't. Budget. I don't need. You don't need any affirmation from me, man. No, it's not affirmation. <laughs> I'm saying, do you agree? To, do you agree to that I, assertion? I do not have to agree on nothing or disagree. No. All I'm just saying is, you speak into so, the choir. So, so I've sent it to you on Messenger. Messenger, I send it. I don't know. Maybe you want to come in. I don't know. I've sent it to you. So, no. What I said is. They cannot win without Dabo. Full support. Mutiela Siloho. Yobula from Banjul to Koina. And say, this is our guy. Dabo has to do that. Also. Lolo halati musa again. So man respect now. But that's what I'm saying. So no no, hey, you see? So Dege, this is the waffling I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell me, the Bobo, I disagree with it. Or Man, I, I, what, I agree with it. Musa again, non -committal, all I'm possibly. just saying before I come before I come on the show, I said everything that I'm gonna say today, <laughs> I ask God to help me. So God help me, God, and I, and I'm sticking to that. Okay. Uh, yeah, but 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 you know, he said Musa Musa again. I as I said, you know, I think you hit a lot of points, and I hope I hope people who are making decisions oh. have the opportunity to view you. And listen to you. I think I think you made great points. I'm not going to take that away from I you. Didn't but the said, affirmation. I made, I made false equivalence. I'm just it's a poor body bunker guy. I have no sway or whatsoever so, in what they do. Okay, talk to I. I let Brother so, Suleiman talk. Happy New Year, my brother. <laughs> he said, "Sorry, I'll say something." Like... <laughs> so, <laughs> so, Happy New Year, Mangi Nekon Banjo. What did he say now? It's like, where is Musa Jangan for the people, by the people? You guys are out. <laughs> so, so how you been? How's the, how's the family? They're doing well. Guy and you on Gambia, not? So, oh, really? Yeah, why guy and you? They came back on the 11th, and then um, they were all excited. Madam Guy, you them, you know, Gambia of an the one in okay. So, Kalei, no, let me know that. But my kids, they love it. I swear to God. They, I mean, it's just, I mean, they're not in tune with maybe some of the things that mean we kind of factor into this thing. I'm going to be very political, if you want to call it that. Now, but then they recognize also the difficulty. I mean, the Ewusuba, I mean, the water pressure is very low. The the lights will go off, those kind of things. Or going from point A to point B. The secondary yeah. roads are horrible. Absolutely Correct. no doubt about that. But taking everything into consideration, mm -hmm. I mean, like I said, there are when you say that people think they young toast government, but I'm not. I'm just saying there are opportunities that if we were to have real change, it can be exploited. And then we can take this country to the next level. Really. Man, yeah. That's all I have been saying. And um, I see some of your comments. About, I'm going to I'm going to from my tongue because you could not buying a continent. We have to disrupt. You have to disrupt your thought process. When Lulu Mom Yagara go me into that, when I do that, I take you off your game because at some point in time, Degan has a frustration. His soul, soul is making me mad. So mad, when you get mad, then you lose your thought process. Then I can come but back I, and hit you. <laughs> how come I'm the only one? I'm the only one being shown, or maybe. I don't know. I mean, uh, you're on. You're not on video, right? No, they come on video. They come on video. Oh, okay. But, but maybe sorry, I'm hungry. Then you are. I'm sure he'll be back. Um, yeah. But you know, there are positives. Madam uh, Fogne, we have to be logical, and and you guys are your strategists. Degan Ayangi was saying he's an idealist. Saying things along the same lines as Banka. He does not want to burn bridges. I wonder buying as a healthy Sariang Numdeway. Mm. Sariang somehow more banker there from different schools of thought, but so so deglosian wahbuba. 
Dang dey just some ways of the way they talk now. Banker of late after Balamudon Demgam. Yeah, I mean now you can see him pivoting uh in some ways. But more, by and large, then they panya uh, you know, you know, hit the points that you usually hit a a quick pass on by Jao. But in a nutshell, I'm not programming them away. You know, the kids they were not born and raised in the same tradition and, and life that we grew up in in Gambia. So they, they cannot be the good judge of understanding the difference yeah. today and what it was yesterday. That's one Correct. point. Correct. The other point, Moine, yes, there are positives in that country. You know, when my family, they went, they, they stayed at this Momodo Semagajani's uh, niece's place. He just opened it up. She was in the UK. Right. Uh, so they, she has an opportunity to open something. You know, the more used in program to advertise. Uh, no, 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 that's fine. I'll do that. But the bottom line is, these are people who are from diaspora. You have them, at least maybe you can say uh, they have some ties of strength from the background of their family because Semagajani yeah. is a powerful name. Absolutely. Uh, but but Nyungfa, why you look at this other sister, uh, Kumba Dafe? You know, when yeah. Damaran Wahamom six years ago, and I was skeptical. But look at what she is doing in empowering the women of Kiang Quinala. That these Quinala. women, you look at them, you know they're happy, they're excited because their business is booming. They are able to do things that the government is struggling with. Now, that said, you know, Man Musa, you crossed and went to Dakar, and you've yeah. seen, you've been to Dakar quite a bit. Yeah. You can't compare the 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 power of purchasing the guy of Senegal or Gambia, because Senegal has always been more expensive than Gambia, and rightly so. Yeah. Now the the issue Moine, man, sadly if my family crossed because they flew out of Dakar if they had crossed a day later they would have been stuck at that river Gambia because ferry with Degan and it was stuck right in the middle yes. of the river yes so, so these are real problems that we have absolutely man, this country the Gambia and the government could have been better off had they reached out to the diaspora as they promised you game of build our country Arma Baro, Musa, bro, you, Arma Baro would have been a candidate for the Mo Ibrahim Foundation Award had he stuck to his guns. Name and three years later, over five years, Jehalas for five years, man, Agreed. Okay. Totally. But then, but then, the problem with this whole entire situation is just bringing in the APRC. Musa, Musa, we are in a very difficult situation. I don't know how you want to dice it. But situation in Nekani, it, it's much more justice. This is why I said you have to be analytical in some ways. There's no way we would be able to pass this TRRC implementation because the people who are sitting in parliament don't support what our ideas must are. So this is the problem that Adam Baro has created for himself and us. Okay. Yes, one belief, one belief when Adam Baro is going to run for elections this 2026. That I will tell you right now. But he's not going to tell everybody that that's what he intends to do. So if he tries to do it, again, he is he is going to be in that situation where there's going to be difficulty, Musa. I mean, come on, the people, you know, elections, you pass in I mean, you're telling me that the UDP is not better off today than they were before 2021? Look at their, look at their posture and the way they're communicating themselves, the way they're acting right now compared to before. So Avery Sabali Bini quickly Lumawa Moine. Yes, I agree in a maybe he does not bring along a lot of political powerhouse or will. Is it would much change? But Musa, where would the UDP be today had they rejected this guy? Regardless. And then he becomes part of the NPP today, where he can come and say, I wanted to join the party. All he does is solidifies people's perception, some of them, that the UDP is a party of this. Dabu is a person of this. From Nekani, this guy, you know what I mean by the nuking? The guy has been nuked right now. He cannot go after the UDP because the UDP opened their arms saying, regardless of who you were, <laughs> a problem in Gun Amir, we took you in. We gave we, you the we, highest we'll, place in we'll our political party. We'll doubt it. No, I'm telling we'll you, this it. is the fact. I mean, Musa, I'm going to, okay. I did political science in undergrad school, where I understand what the politics of Gambia as much as I should. But you know what? When it comes to democracy, you're looking at it from a lens that is kind of wider than the Gambia. We don't have democracy in that country. You don't go I will not believe that. 
what we oh, have we is what we, we have, have is a pseudo is a pseudo quoted pro no, while Jahan, you, you started no, your do. program talking about uh, there's do. there's no intimidation of the media houses. I mean, they've been intimidated we have, we have, media I wanna caution you about this Sabali thingy, what he's going to say or what he's not going to say. One thing I can tell you, do I see him going after Dabo? I don't think he will. But the idea that he's not going to go after UDP, hmm. Of course. But no, they're not going to do So he's not going to do anything. No, he will. Don't be too quick. Listen, he will. He will. Big Blumala. He will do that because that is why they took him in. But that is not going to bite because the people can come back and say, okay, if, you, if you're if you saying all these things about the UDP, you were there. They put you on a pedestal. So yeah. what do you have to say against this party? I think you guys are underestimating the UDP as an entity of itself. You try to say I told you, they they didn't know what they would the, do party, the party is even better off losing this guy in the yes. long run. I'm yes. telling you, man, I honestly God believe that. No, but the, this Sabali, 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 Sabali was becoming the face of the party. Sabali, I agree. I'm I, telling you, yo, you saying that they should have rejected him. Nobody is saying that they should have rejected him. No, 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 no. All no, we are no, saying they, is, they, they did what Linko accepted is even better for the political for the UDP. No, why you don't have to as opposed you don't to, have to, to reject you don't have him. To, you don't have to no, not reject. Anybody can come and join the party. Man me smanetni. Elect my call Bob Ture or whoever is responsible for. I think is um they will reject the you you are, No, they will not. Your, your oh, they will not. They if I you. tell them they, I'm gonna join the party, they no. will accept me. No. Musa Jeng. What Musa Jeng man ma ma na je na jarta ma na man 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 me. Denial agenda ticket. We are not even gonna do it on this platform day. We are going all the way to pipeline, and I'm gonna shake hands. Yeah, you shake hands formally. Of course. So, but what Daria, I'm telling you, you they cannot take me. Party, Hold man. on. Muzajeng has something to do with the They NPC. cannot take I'm me. Telling you this, man. They cannot take me because the moment they do that, they cannot take me, and then I become. If that were to take me, and then the UDP, and then I become the spokesperson of the party. Every issue, I'm on coffee time speaking for the UDP. You know how attractive I'm gonna get? I will be the most important. Political, I mean, they would have created. No, no, Musa Jeng would be way up there. Why, why Saul did And I would be that? attractive. When Musa. And that's exactly what happened to Mumu Musa. Sabali. That's what the yeah. person Musa. did. Musa, mm -hmm. Musa, one thing, one thing, you know that you and I agree with that, right? On God, that. The militants. When the brother man was part of UDP, his birthday, the whole Facebook will be hijacked with his pictures and all that stuff, <laughs> right? It was, it was unnecessary. Huh? So, it but today, no, 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 but, but what I'm trying to say, I, I think I agree with what you're saying, that I think Saul, Saul's analysis is off the mark a little bit on this one. Bro, I think you need to you need to raise your uh, political antenna a little bit higher on this one because. But you know what, boy? Because you only got four of them last when he has it. He doesn't have that. But listen, I guys. really, I really, I, I think, I think, I think they sponsor him. I, even yesterday, I was laughing because I was through, going through TikTok mm -hmm. and I saw this. Uh, this message from Hadi Demers. <laughs> what what he said? You know when 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 he got in trouble, they did a fundraising for him and sent him a bunch of money. <laughs> and those people are demanding their their, their, their money back. Why why Musa? Musa, the video is so funny. He says. <laughs> I Listen, guys, you know what, though? Musa, in all mm -hmm. honesty, yes, there was chaos, but it was mostly him actually doing the talking. And mostly him going after the NPP. This is the point I'm raising. 
Whereas these people were taking the back seat, and he was the one who was doing the punching. But he was going, he was going to, to he was against UDP and PP the wrong way because Correct. he got in trouble a lot of time, and UDP has to come out exactly and his position. We all said that here. Thank you very so, much. So, so he and, went and about let, the wrong way, so, so, a, a, an educated let, guy. Let me ask you one. Huh? So, quick question though, but I'm not done Do you seriously believe me since he joined UDP? This guy has really expanded the base of the party. That he converted a lot of people that said, Ooh, it was wrong for me to vote for NPP. Savali said so. Now I'm joining UDP. You no, really no, believe not, that? No, not necessarily. But here's what I'm thinking. Here's what I'm saying. What he did is a different set of ways that you are you are thinking. Yes, Munna Amne, he did not he did not move the needle. But Sabali was Sabali, what? Then could your credit? He went up country, he did all of these things. But yeah. I remember one time Bim Wahene Mom Damona Banjul see election in Rohi Malik law, whether it's factual or not. But this guy actually think or take that that is the point I'm raising, Musa. Then could take in a position Bohane. He can be the, the bulldog of the UDP now, for obvious reasons, just like Lusarina Wahne. But today, Musa, today Lai Wahne Tay, the fact that this guy came in in peace and he left in peace puts the UDP in a much better position than they would have been had they said, you know what, Sabali is nothing but trouble. We don't want him to join our political party. Just think about these two things. But for Blay Wahid. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't understand that. <clears throat> you want me to I'm explain? Not, no, I'm just saying they don't have to reject him. He could have been part of the United Democratic Party, like any yeah. other member, without making him the face of it, without touting him, without kind of Tamgarek. They make this guy big. His head becomes very big. Come on, song, don't get me. All that talk. Can't kill you know? me. But he's gone. <laughs> he's gone. And then, and, and, and and then he, he became, he's the one who would go to coffee time and be talking gibberish. You know, and, you and, 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 and you say one thing about Sabali, they'll accuse you of everything that you've ever done in your life. Whatever okay. he enabled Jame, that was all gone. Matatu, it didn't matter because he's part of us. So people would question, Nini, are they really committed to, I mean, what they're saying about the horrible things that were done by these APRC militants? You can't tell me Sidi Jai is the worst thing that I ever believed, and you think that Sabali is just, he's okay, he has apologized. That is the biggest nonsense that any person could really, with a straight face, straight face say that and expect me to believe you. What's that? What's that? What's that? What's that? I'm gonna I'm gonna help right now. Huh? I think I think the focus ought to go back to CDK at the finance minister about selling all of our our, our resources, oh, well, especially our sectors, our, our sectors. It should go to no, Arma Baro. Arma Baro no, for the corruption. No, CD, it should go Oh he's uh, he, he is uh, so you gotta give you gotta give he's, where Sidiketa, I think, is really I, think, one person I think he has a lot of good stuff that I that I do respect. Yeah, I can't believe I'm hearing you with saying all what's been thrown at him. I'm serious. Yeah. Guys, I think, come on, I give me a break. Sidiketa, seriously, if given the opportunity under different leadership circumstances, I think he could be a very effective finance minister. Seriously. <clears throat> I, I really do believe that. I think he has what it takes to do that. Now, but the leadership, that's where the problem lies. And sometimes, I mean, there are, to be honest, there are good, there are good people in the cabinet that I think could have made a huge difference um, under different circumstances, under a different leader. I really do believe that. To be to, so, be, Musa, to be very Musa, candid. Musa, Musa, I like the question. You started by saying a lot of rosy things about the Gambia. Then you pivoted and started talking about so many other major problems that are confronted. Yeah, but that's what a they balanced, glued. objective they person they would glued. do. They and then in the end, you actually added something that is troubling by saying, you know, if you had any other choice, perhaps you may not want to associate yourself with this country, which is your home oh, country. Oh, now huh? I'm glad you raised that because you, you misunderstood what I said. No, they will. This, this is, this is no, Ara, let me clarify. You hypothetical. You gave a hypothetical. No, they, no let me sure. clarify. Money. Wow. Money. Wow. The only reason why I still have hope about this country and I love this country to death 
and every year I would go is because I'm a Gambian. That's where my umbilical cord was buried. Correct. If I were not a Gambian, 